<laughs> I get on him. I get on him. I'm like, are we ever gonna put those on? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, it's taking yeah. a while. And I'm like, oh, okay. But then in that meantime, he's like, we're doing, we'll do another one. Like this is the second one this week. Yeah. And it's mainly because one, he's like, I'm always down for it. I have no problem talking. And and in general, work kind of like the way that you say, you, you know, you've become with your podcast is how we were when we mm-hmm. met. Whereas like, and I, he, <laughs> ours. Do you know? anything about our podcast we listen to yours mm-hmm. um i know I, I listened to the last one that you did or at least what was it thoughts Which and prayers it? yeah thoughts and prayers and uh, god damn it i hate not having not being able to use our normal equipment that's the one thing <laughs> because but, i have become a little bit of a sound whore like you know i just kind of grab it and like i have a profile first for skype because that's what we use like yeah. I have a profile for like skype conversations and so I load in that profile in, in Adobe Audition and just kind of crack it, like crank it through there. And I just, it, it, I don't even care now. It's, it's all about just the, <laughs> it's the content. Yeah, I was gonna say that's, that, but see, that's what I'm saying. Like, um, especially, and this is not a knock on you, but I've seen Steve definitely change from when I met him because we worked together um, yeah. a few, what was it three, four years ago now? And I've yeah. seen him because he's like, as he says, he's younger than me, but I've seen his opinions and, and how strong he was on things that may have been wrong or right or whatever. And then just being more open because yes. I'll tell anybody and I got a friend I'm trying to get on here. I told him, mm-hmm. like, man, once you get on this podcast and you start talking and you start ignoring everything that's around you and you realize you're just having a conversation because he's like, oh, man, I only have an hour. I'm like. No, you don't. You, I guarantee. Yeah. I was like, when me and you talk, our hour turns into two and three hours. Right. And we, like, yeah. we talk ourselves out. Same thing with me and Steve. And yeah. I was just like, because when you get on this podcast and you start talking, especially mm-hmm. something you're passionate about, I was like, you automatically just fall into it. And you're like, you might say something that you didn't expect to. And then all it yeah. takes is somebody to go, oh, yeah, man, I'll do the same thing or some shit. Or somebody mm-hmm. agree with you. And you realize, like, especially as men, you realize, like, oh, I don't. I don't have to hold that in. I well, can... you're like, oh, I'm not alone on this. Exactly. Yep. Wait, I, I'm, and I apologize. I had to fix a light there. Um, <laughs> yeah, running around. Here yeah, like I, it was the wiring was up, but um, um, to clarify, we only and I think I told you this in the in the email. We only are on YouTube, and uh-huh. um, basically for a while there, we would when Mike and I first we actually worked together, and then um. I had done maybe like one or two before you Mm -hmm. and then he came on and then like I had like a hard time just getting more people involved because everybody, everybody loves to talk to you and be like, oh, I love to do a podcast. Yeah, yeah. And then you get them down. And the thing is, I went over the top because I wanted people to take it serious. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Because I was afraid like, you know, and then I realized, okay, I needed to focus just more on the content. And then it just Mm -hmm. sort of was like. And then I was just like, okay. And then I'll, every time I did one, I sort of made it like a goal to like improve on something different. So I was yeah. like, okay, our picture kind of sucked. It's like, well, why? And it was like, okay, lighting. So then I, I you know, I went and got these, you know, it, you get the point, but snowballed. like, yeah, it snowballed <laughs> yeah. real quick. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then talking about that. Mike and I were like, you know, let's do, you know, we, we always talked about, you know, racist, racism stuff. Personal conversations. You know. Where it was not, I don't want to say, I always not say not racism, that. I don't we talked about but, race. You know, we talked race about culture stuff, yeah, exactly. you know, and, and there was a lot of stuff <laughs> happening at the time. We, know, we worked down, saying that. I know you do. We worked down in Baltimore. So we always talked about, you know, stuff that was going on down there. Freddie yeah, Gray. Yeah. Uh, the, the Plus riding. I know the judge in the Freddie Gray case. So it helped out. And it was like, yeah. And then he, he met me and, and I, the I statues think, and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And like we used to have passionate conversations at work, just mm-hmm. basically fucking around and yeah. uh, or dicking around, if you will. It's like, and then we noticed that instead of being like being mad, we'd be like, "All right, so you want to go get something to eat? Are you, you ready to finish this order or yeah. some, something like that?" And it was like, just that uh, relationship alone was like. It's funny because when you left, I was like, "Damn, man, I'm gonna miss that." And I did. And then when you when we brought it back and we started talking down here, and I was like, "Well, see, now I don't have to look on my shoulder to see if somebody's coming in the door. I don't have to worry yeah. about getting this work done now. I can just fully talk about it." And we started doing that, and it was like, "Oh shit, right. okay, yeah." <laughs> I was like, "This is this is what we should have been doing." And again, we don't just talk about racism. No, we don't. But he we, leaves with that every time. And I'm like, this is why he scares all his friends. 
because they're no. predominantly white. I'm like, they're not going to want to come on and talk with, because uh, I'm a I'm a big guy and I'm, you know, I'm black, as you can see. I said, they're yeah. not going to want to sit in front of a big black guy and sometimes discuss how they may have an issue with certain things <laughs> because he's over here like, we talk about racism and racist and racism. Yeah. I'm like, this scares them away. I was like, I even told them just recently, I was talking to uh, two of my friends who are black and I was like, and they're afraid of saying the wrong thing um, yeah. and, I'm, and it, I was actually shocked and surprised because the way we talk, I'm like, you know, they're free as can be. But to actually put it down, first of all, everybody thinks that they're got them on the Joe Rogan show and it's going to cancel them or get them fired. Yeah. Second of all, they're like, I don't want my friends and family. I'm like, well, if you're saying this shit in front of them anyway, like, yeah. it's not going to be anything news, different. Right? Yeah. I was like, it's not news. It's like, you're just expressing just your opinion. Everybody's afraid of the cancel culture. Quote, like, quote. Yeah. But I was like, we, we do, do, we do stick to those topics. And I, you guys kind of do too, but you're, I, I, we're we're different areas. So we we've yeah. done episodes on the cancel culture. We've done mm-hmm. episodes on we've done multiple episodes on race. But we are certainly not afraid to even put black people through the grinder. Um, you know, just there's there's something that and and of course our you know obviously our podcast is called the Salumist, but we did that because of um, of what a Salumist is. You know, it's someone who who I makes. No idea. That's how you say it. We've yeah, been, yeah. We've so, been trying to figure out. We're how like you the Solomon's it. podcast. Yeah, we said the Solomon's so many times. I was like, I looked up the definition. I was like, okay. Yeah, I read the definition <laughs> too. I was like, okay, I get it. I was like, but what is? I was like, but why did chickens that name? And yeah, know. so our <laughs> you know the tagline is you know everyone loves sausage and bacon, but no one wants to see it get made. Exactly, you know, I saw we, that. We want to, if we want to get to the bottom of some of these topics, we have to be willing to get messy, and sometimes it's. We know when we talk about race, well, it's not just white people. You know, there's there's one thing that we talked about in one episode uh, where we brought up this one book called the it's called the Redneck Manifesto, and so one of the things that it says is I've that I've heard about that. You said yeah, Redneck, yeah, so, Redneck yeah, Manifesto, redneck. Oh, okay. yeah. So you know, it talks about some of the people in like Appalachia and stuff, and and how they have you know got some of the same uh, hardships as as African Americans have, mm-hmm. but they're told essentially to shut up because at least you're not black. So in some cases you start to, if you can, if it's, if you're able to exercise some empathy there, you're like, well, shit, maybe is that why they're mad? Is that why they say questions? You know, they may mm-hmm. ask questions like, why don't we have this thing or whatever? And so we, we, we try to literally examine every single part of the race topic we have an episode called uh called a fresh deck of race cards and, <laughs> i saw uh, that i wanted to watch yeah, it i was oh, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna look that one I yeah actually, yeah, and yeah it's it's we're like why do why do we play the race card like it, it, there's there's times where there are things where you need to bring it up but there's mm-hmm. other times where you know it's like did you have to did you have to say it that way <laughs> he's actually <laughs> we actually have a game that we bought it's called rights versus racism and sometimes yeah. we'll just play the game and we right get, or racist. right or racist sorry <laughs> Um, and it, it it's funny because he wanted to be in a uh, a I was the right winger racist, <laughs> and I wound up being the PC police guy. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. a we have another one where we were um, it's we're, we're trying to come up with we're trying to get the right people mm-hmm. for part two of it, but it was that one was called the greatest lie ever told, and so we called it that. Like I have this theory, you know, that the greatest lie ever told is that we're all created the same. And, uh, you know, that's what they tell us to to essentially not want us to know why we're different. Mm-hmm. And so we we went through and we talked about, like, the, the paths of migration out of Africa. It's understood that humanity started over there. But mm-hmm. the way that humans evolved over time when they had the first spread that went into Europe and then that spread that, you know, that went to the east, that crossed over into Asia and you know India and oh, Russia over the Bering, yeah. yeah yeah over the the Bering Strait down into Mexico and all that kind of stuff you see that because of um like culturally because there was such an abundance of resources mm-hmm. those people did not have to innovate the way that the you know and I'm doing my air quotes the way white people did in Europe so you know and and whenever there is a rich abundance of resources those people tend to tend to lean to be like a lot more spiritual so that's why you see like white savior you know, a, a do what well uh, i'm sorry go ahead i said, oh, no, I I said white savior i just oh. had watched a documentary on that so i'm sorry <laughs> that's why you see like you know a lot of the cultures that you know are 
you know, just very spiritual. You see the Buddhist people, you see mm. the, um, uh, you see the Native Americans and stuff like that, how there, there's a really big tie to the earth and stuff. But whenever you see some of the, the deities in the cultures and up in the, uh, you know, Northern, you know, Europe and stuff like that, they're more of a representation of what you had to be strong as fuck. Like Zeus, if you put him up against everyone else, he fuck everyone's day up. Or you know what I'm saying? Gods are like, the, like they're no pussy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like, the, so what we were saying is that the, even even their bodies and tendencies and all those kind of stuff um, evolve. And so we're like, we feel we're like, okay, why is it that like that white people have more of a proclivity for like adventure and war and battle and all that stuff it's like because that's what they had to do yeah. and so we were we were saying like don't send black people to go and fight a war we that's not what we're good at like we're not don't send us in to go and blow some shit up you know what i'm saying like it's <laughs> just not what that's not then we're like we have to be okay with understanding this that that's not what we're good at. Is, you know me too we're not we're not built like that but there are white people that that are have. Why do you think who the fuck came up with the X Games? You know what I mean? It's oh, we like, know. Oh, it's not a question. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying that like that that desire for for the thrill, for the, thr for, yeah. for the hunt, and so <laughs> what we said that it's like we we call that one that episode like where the wave breaks. It's the greatest lie ever told, part one, where the wave breaks. And so we had the two waves of human migration going those two different directions. But when mm -hmm. the time that they met when the settlers came over and crossed over and, and met a lot of the uh the the people that were in resource rich areas in the americas and stuff like that right. what happened they fucked their days up you know? <laughs> yes like they, they did they whooped their ass they had better immune systems they had all sorts of stuff it's like they they're better weaponry. They're just yeah better weapon but they were just conditioned for that now we were good at you know the native americans were good at farming they were good at all all these other things they were very spiritual, but that's how it was. And then we we took it a step further. We were like, okay, what is the greatest? Who's the greatest African war general? It's Shaka Zulu. What what like what did what defeated his army? A couple dudes and some fucking machine guns. Okay, and it's like yeah. they he was he was this great general with with spears and shields and stuff like that. And they got their shit wrecked by some machine guns. And it's they really, were not like, prepared. They're not prepared, but they didn't have to be. Because whenever you're there's you're rich in resources, there's no need to uh, innovate. Exactly. So we were saying that like you know, and then we had some other like people listen to our episode, and then one one of our white friends was just like, "Dude, I've always had this weird desire to like to hunt and to kill and to like." <laughs> explore. And he's like, "You guys kind of like uh, made that stuff okay." This is and what this like, one does. That's part of your blood, dude. Like, don't be ashamed of that stuff. And I think that society has put us in a position to not want to explore that stuff and be okay with it. No, black people are not fucking good at hunting and killing and all that kind of stuff. We're not. Like, but gotta, we're good at. Like, I want to disagree what? with you so badly. I, I want to disagree. With you. I need to do more research, but I want to disagree with you so badly. Yeah, I mean, like, it's just, it's, you know, to, to the to the magnitude that that. And, and I, I hate using the blanket term white people oh, yeah. uh, because it really does depend on where they come from. Because there are some that if they are if they are more, um, uh, what is it? Uh, there, was, there was one wave that moved up there, that moved up, that made it to like Iceland, Greenland, Ireland, all those kind of places. Those guys are way more spiritual, you know. And you can tell the, the Celtic gods, those, those kind of people, you know what I mean? They're very much in tune with the earth. But then there's the other ones that had to fight with the Neanderthals and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's where you're going to come up with different types of gods that they have, like the Zeus's and the, you know, all those other type of people. And so um, it's it what we what our theory is that, you know, a lot of this stuff comes down to the abundance of resources that makes us kind of who we are. And then we, we talked about the different body types and all that kind of stuff. Oh, and uh, it seemed to. Like it seems like it matches up really mm -hmm. well, but uh, you know that that's kind of what our theory was, and we were just like, let's not be, let's not make it weird or anything like that. Like we're not good at that shit, and it's different for me being a first generation American, mm. and this is also you know going on race when we talk about slavery, we talk I, that's not a history that I share with black people. It's not you know, 
Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, part of putting black people and putting race through the grinder Mm -hmm. is saying something like, or not being afraid to say like, no one has ever been conquered in such a way as African Americans to the point, like you can kill millions of Jews, you can kill millions of like native Americans and stuff, but at least they have their name. Like, can you uh, imagine that? Yeah. Like, they, I've always told him that was one. Of, I was like, like the, the native name you mean? Yeah, I was gonna say. I told yeah, yeah. him. That. I said that one of. The, I said, you know how it's fucked up for uh, black people in a certain way, and I always tell people this when we, we go back mm-hmm. and forth, and they're like, "How?" I was like, "I was like, I guarantee you, my great great grandfather's name wasn't Jenkins. I was oh, like, yeah, we no, don't yeah. even have our last names." I was like, "So yeah. one, that's how you you discredit you." You basically make somebody lose their heritage and their history, and you start yeah. them a new here. And it's like, and when you start them a new here, you start. And if and if they were slaves, that's that's a horrible place to start from. And it's like because yeah. there's no there's no progress, there's no success. Like this is supposed to be a small time in history where it's like slavery was like okay, it happened, but then you know, but before that we were this. Like I, I told him, I tell my son, like I, I taught my son about Mansa Musa. Um, mm-hmm. Probably like a year ago. Now he's forgotten most of it. He just knows he was the richest guy in the world. He knows that yeah. because he remembered the money part. But I also told him about a bunch of black innovators and important black people in the culture. Yeah. And uh, we actually had this, uh, a discussion, an uh, argument, him and another guy in the past about this because I told him I was going to teach my son about black history. I ordered some books. And they're like, well, why do you want to teach him the best? I was like, first of all, I had to get at you. I was like, first of all, why would I teach him that? I was like, first of all, he's going to learn about it no matter what. Right. Second yeah. of all, I was like, I'm going to show him all the positive things so he has a positive outlook on black show people. Show him the negative stuff, too. No, no. He's, I was like, we're going to learn negative, but I showed him the positive. But yeah. in between the positive, I was like, but this is what happened. This is the reason why yeah. this person did this. This is the reason why this person is so important, X, Y, and Z. But I was also telling him, like, I was like, yeah, the... Our last name, you know, that kind of is a bad thing because it, it, I was like, if you look in your history, like if you do, when everybody was it, the ancestry and shit like that. Ancestry it always goes back to someone who owned you. It, it, uh, it's so fun. I remember 50 Cent did Keenan Peel, Thomas Jefferson. Exactly. Yeah, 50, yeah, 50 yeah. Cent did one on TV one time. This is some years back. And basically his ended at his slave master. Yeah. Yep. And I was like, that's not, that's not where it started. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, no. I was like, but because it's only here. You yeah. know, it's like that's where a lot of unfortunately black heritage start from is the negative. And it's like, oh, yeah. oh man, I wish well, we knew more. Well, the one my dad, um, my dad wrote a book called From Freedom to Freedom. He's a retired professor of uh, folklore. And, is it and freedom to freedom? From freedom to freedom. Now, you, I, I, so I don't want to interrupt you, but you <laughs> are from Africa, correct? Or I, you, you're born here? <laughs> well, he's from I'm Nigeria. Oh, really? well, I apologize. I mean, that's what I got you know, a little no, background from that. Sean most had told me. Um, yeah, so I was I was born in East Lansing, Michigan, and uh but uh my parents are are both Nigerian. Nigerian. Okay. We we very we still keep it very Nigerian at home, you know what I mean? <laughs> nice. and, uh, um but the you know, in my dad's book, for you know, found that, you know, a vast the about ninety seven percent of of slaves are from Nigeria. Really? So, yeah, and so um, I think it's about ninety-seven. It's, it's, it's in the nineties. I think it's it's very. It's Is that in the book? Uh, I don't remember if it's in the book. It's I've you know I've gone to place where he's done research. So there's a there's a museum in in Virginia, the Heritage Museum. It's in Staunton, Virginia. Mm-hmm. So I've they have like little um, uh, farms and things that are set up to show the different cultures. And my dad headed up the one for the slaves, and so. That one is because it's built, it, like it's made the way that a Nigerian village was. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's you know through the research that he's done, you know the vast majority of slaves are actually Nigerian. Um, yeah, that's pretty crazy. Never knew but, that. Uh, yeah, so it's always funny when people will like talk about like East African kings and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, nah, it's not your history. But. But yeah, it's um, having having conversations like that is some that's very important towards coming towards some kind of a agreement or a good space w- within that conversation. And we can't be we cannot be afraid to have 
talks like that. So, uh, and it's funny because yeah. his his view is so much different than normal. Like, right. The, I, I would say his outlook is probably going to differ significantly from mine. Right. From what um, my parents and grandparents have told me versus what his parents and grandparents so, have told him. So here's the thing, uh, just to kind of give you like a. a quick overview of, of our show and how it started is, you know, we, we started talking about this a lot and in our first couple episodes, it's, it's pretty hacky where we're just sitting here like, so what don't you like about white people? What don't you like about black people? And then it, it morphed into like, okay. And I realized in amongst myself that I was like, Oh, he, there is a lot of this past that I didn't know about. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, basically from the, from day one, I started reading, and educating myself on the past, black past. And there's mm -hmm. like the, the amount of civil rights movements that there were, et cetera, et cetera. And all of these things that I had no idea. Like I'd never even heard of the Tulsa massacre until I met you. That's yep. crazy. As a 30, at the time, 30, it was just last 30 year. year old man. No, it was last year. Yeah. You know <laughs> what I mean? I, I'm like, I never, and if I did, it was like, yeah, you know, it, no, it's, it's even yeah. in Tulsa. If it's not Martin Luther King, we're like, yeah, I don't know. for a hundred years, yeah. it was like a secret, even in Oklahoma right. and Tulsa, because they didn't want to talk about it. They're just now starting to talk about it. Right. In the last mm -hmm. couple of years. So, and then it evolved and, and so some of my opinions had started to change and I know some of Mike started to change, That's but true. you know, I, I just had someone watch the show the other day and they <laughs> instantly suggested that I read all these books. Mm -hmm. and it what it was, means to say is a black woman saw the show the other day and she got offended by Steve, even though I say probably more offensive stuff than he does. She yeah. just saw white one, guys saying one stuff. One side. Yeah, and, it and, makes me so sick, man. Like, well, his it, boss also screwed it, you because he told Thanks for that bringing you, that part because I wasn't going to edit it out no, until no, you no. said that. But. I'm not saying, I didn't say any names, but I'm saying he it screwed him because he told him like, didn't he tell him like you're cons like lean conservative or something like that? So I didn't want to get into that yet, but oh yeah, I got you. I, I will. Well, that's what the problem because when she heard that before she watched it, she automatically got an idea of you, and when she saw you talking about certain things without giving well, you, letting you do the full context. Well, so I mean, I, I pressed because it was like things. So okay, and I, I'm going to give you a stat here. And this, I'm a big numbers guy, right? That's what I do for a living. So like. Things that bother me is like disingenuous statistics, okay, and something like, okay, black people are two and a half times more likely to be shot by the cops than white people, and what they're going to do is bring it up to per capita to make it equal, et cetera, et cetera, as we yeah. all know. And I'm like, okay, but that's the exact same way where they get the that multiple someone's black, you're six times more likely to be, uh, you know, commit a crime, five times more likely to be commit murder, four mm -hmm. times more likely to be carrying a weapon. It's like. Okay, you want to you want to do one side of the coin that helps your argument, but you don't want to look at the other six of the argument that hurts you. And obviously, there's a lot of systemic things that could cause that and have led to that that we could get into. And I typically look at it more of a uh, class to income thing more mm -hmm. than uh, you know a poverty race thing than than it is a, a skin color thing. To your point of Appalachian, sure. I want to get to that sure. to a second, but that's sort of how my opinion. So I really look at the the idea that has more to do with money, not skin color. Okay. Yeah. Because so, I live in BFE, Pennsylvania. So to your point sure. to Appalachia, I drive around all over the state and yeah. I see everybody just thinks Philly and Pittsburgh. The rest of Pennsylvania is pretty poor. And yeah. I go to these t towns that were based on a coal mine that is now just crawling yeah. with meth addicts. You know what I mean? Yep. And it's just like just looks like a tornado went through and these people are and you're just like oh yeah man. It, oh what what happened so it, it i, I want to ask you a question and well before i ask you this question i listened to your uh your uh political one that you guys did on the the vp debate, the debate. <laughs> and i'm big into politics and yeah. i'd love to talk to uh, you, your your friend uh about who Chris. you know said he's a socialist yes because that blows my mind I, I, I just – everything I see – and because and the reason it blows my mind is because he's older, right? Now, yeah. here's the thing I'm going to get to. Oh, he's an older guy? Well, I'm Chris, assuming he's our age, right? Yeah, he's yeah he's a year older than me. How old are you? 34. Oh, okay. So usually I like – when I hear somebody's a socialist, I'm like, oh, how old are you? They're like, 19. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Makes sense. So like when I, when you guys were talking, I was like, oh, okay. Like now I'm intrigued. And I'm going to be – I'll be straight with you, man. I, if I'm not mistaken, you're a libertarian. Yeah, that's what I lean. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I I, I consider myself in the middle 
independent, but I'm, I would say Republican, more or less. So, yes, yeah. I am a Trump supporter, which I didn't tell you in the email because I was like, he would be like, no, <laughs> he was, uh, he was not worried, happening. <laughs> he was worried you're going to automatically be like, nah, I'm busy. No. And it's, <laughs> right, I, I, right, I've exactly. Never, yeah. Because I was like, uh, you know, and it's funny because it's like it's it's so hilarious how you can judge it, you know, judge a book by its cover. But you yeah. see that red hat and it's like a raging bull. It's like everybody just says, because you think Trump is OK. Look, well, there's the a most... lot of things wrong with Trump. And I'm not going to get down that rabbit yeah. hole because I can see you already want to talk. No, about no, it, I was but... gonna say that's the most views <laughs> we got is when he has. He, mind you, he has the hats. He was wearing a shirt that says same crime, same different crime, time, different time. And then he had a MAGA hat on. I just had a Black Lives Matter hat on. you. I, I still got the audio, but my video froze. Is Here's? Okay, you know. now, I, now I can. All right. Yeah, you I heard you say something about a hat and then... Oh, you know, so I was saying uh, one of the our clips, basically, that got the most views and, and uh, feedback was he was wearing a shirt that said same crime, different... Uh, no, same, same, yeah, same crime, crime different, different time. time. And then he had a MAGA hat on. So everybody ignored his shirt, saw the white guy with the MAGA hat on, and then... I had lizard brain of people, you know what I mean? Oh no, but I had a I had a BLM hat on, right? That is his yeah. hat. It's not my hat. It's yeah. his hat. He asked me to wear it. I wore the hat. My shirt didn't. It was just a silly shirt or whatever. But the funny thing about it was when people actually listened to the clip, because I had a lot of people like they were like, "Yeah, give it to him, Mike." Blah 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 blah. Right. Like a lot of black people, and I was like, "Did you guys listen to this?" And I yeah. know that I know only I think probably four or five people actually listen to it, but like forty or fifty people are like, yeah, yeah, you give you kick that you kick his ass, fuck Trump. But one of the people that uh, was like a, a staunch like Democrat, I'm talking about, he's like fuck Republicans in every way. He was like, is this guy really a, a mega guy? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, why? And he was like, well. What he said makes sense. I was like, well, that's why I talk to him. That's why I'm I'm sharing this with you because I wouldn't talk to a crazy person who couldn't make sense of what he's trying to, you know, convey to you. But it was funny that I had a few people who did that and they were like, like, were you guys fucking with us? I was like, no. I was like, he did move for Trump. And they yeah, were like, yeah. but he made sense. I was like, I know. And it was just so funny to see that because I always tell him, I was like, ah, oh, no, people, you know, most most people not gonna really think that. And then it'll it'll be a group of people that does something or somebody, and he's like, and I'm like, well, I mean, I don't think that. How about that? Like, I, I always have to take it back and be like, well, I, I don't think that about you. <laughs> like, I know you, so. But it's just funny. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I I, I cut no, you off. You know, I, I always think it's very, you know, you think of like the, a very when you reduce it to a very like reptilian like lizard brain type of thing that's how a lot of people treat politics unfortunately mm -hmm. yeah, like they'll true. see a hat and it just triggers something and then they it's almost pavlovian you know where, if you remember the um pavlov's uh test when he would ring the bell and the dog would start drooling mm -hmm. yep. you know, the dog would think when they see a maga hat they instantly just <laughs> you, know, you, you can't wear a red hat no matter who you nope. are no more yeah and so <laughs> It's really interesting to see what kind of effect that has had, and it, it, it speaks volumes to the to the marketing team of Trump's campaign, and and, and like just they did a fantastic job. Yeah, they did. With, uh, yeah, they, they did. Like, they're highly efficient with the way that they can can elicit a, an emotion like that, and it's mainly to people who are who who don't really don't really care too much about it. There's there's people that'll wear the hat that 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 can talk perfectly fine mm -hmm. um, there's people that don't support him that are you know staunch democrats or whatever that are fucking dumb and like <laughs> i don't want to give anyone a pass for for any of it you know like i i tell people you know one of the the you know libertarians certainly get shit on quite a bit because they you know, they never get anything a lot done. of people think you're a conservative but, uh, like alt right like you're the crazy conservative cousin a lot do of what time. me no, oh. I'm not you in, oh, individually, yeah. but I'm saying libertarians. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so for, I think, one of the biggest responsibilities of a libertarian is knowing when you have to make concessions for certain things. Mm -hmm. And um, I've certainly had to make a lot of, like, concessions in terms of, like, beliefs and stuff like that because it can, it can be for the greater good. You know, there's, you know, when we talk about something like, like abortion, right? Mm -hmm. My simple rule is: if you don't like abortions, don't get one. You know, I, agree. But I also yeah, don't think that the government should have 
any say in anything. But I also recognize that if men could have babies, we could abortions live- would be so. Well, we could stick our dick in like a red box at Kroger or whatever, <laughs> you know, just, and it'll just take it out of there. You know, I know it would be that easy. Abortions There'd would be a be lot of red through. boxes with Listen, fucking STDs, drive man. Drive through, <laughs> homie. I'm te- that's why. That's one of my issues I've had. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. There's, there's that, and then when we talk about like, you know, so this election. Um, I, I don't have a problem saying that I'm going to vote for Biden, not because I like him, mm-hmm. but because Uh-oh. I actually want a president that we can all collectively hate. Like <laughs> when you when everyone hates the president, you realize, motherfucker, you work for us. Dude. Like we can all hold him accountable. And, yeah. and, and the blind faith that's happening that's right now with Trump, I cannot way. excuse. I cannot excuse it. Because there's certain things where you know that this dude is not helping the image of the United States. He's not helping our country in general. And we get so caught up in the the love that they have for a president that it blows my mind. Like people don't like the amount of blind love that people had for Obama made me sick. I oh, thought he was thank a big, you. big dude. Uh, big so it's the same blind you. love for the, the but, Trump people. And exactly. by the way, I'm an independent. I, I, you're right. Who probably yes. leads more exactly. liberal. That's it. I'm, I'm throwing all of them in the blender. I agree. And I'm saying that like if if we knew that you know right now the you know unless that number has changed obama's top dog for the most kills with drone strikes you oh, know yeah. what I mean? what should have like, been a conservative like oh, hell yeah who built the cages <laughs> who built the him, cages come on yeah, right. <laughs> but for him his his shtick was always work smarter not harder that's always what it is you know mm-hmm. everyone thinks that you know the the might of the us is like our military go in there and it's like no you know ancient don't need that you know, it's not not only is it the drones, but it's our cyber warfare. Mm-hmm. Man, and, uh, we stepped it up under his administration hardcore. Yeah, and there was some really <laughs> fucked up stuff that we that we did that even came back to bite us in the ass. And uh, I think that stuff is cool anyway. And he still had my support, <laughs> but I wasn't I wasn't blindly supporting any of that. And I think that the problem that has happened right now is that we have turned the we've we've turned politics into the fucking a show. Tampa Bay Rays versus the you know LA yes. Dodgers or something mm-hmm. like that. That's all it is right now. So if we can all collectively hate one person, then that person will know. <laughs> that is hilarious. That is the funny so, Joe Biden like well to his to his point, uh, I've said the same thing because I was like, look, if Joe wins, it's good. If Joe wo- yeah. loses, it's good. And the reason I think it's good if Joe wins it is yet. because <laughs> it's officially going to shit down this narrative of the career politician because mm-hmm. look and, and i know your buddy said he he wasn't like a, a he didn't lean left like joe was joe was like a centrist, mm-hmm. yeah, a centrist and yeah. i would say i disagree because of the way i've seen joe just pander to the crowd joe yeah, has Mark. reneged on everything <laughs> seeing everything he's he like joe in the 80s uh-huh. was basically a republican yeah and now you just- that way though like what happened well to see change? that's the thing stop people stop being in the stop being in the middle. each other in the middle right. and we're like no nah, i'm over here because it started they were able to stay in office longer they were, could get more money you know backing well it was that, it so. was that's why the democrats got hard on crime because it's like hey we need to start winning like you know what i mean yeah. and it was like it was you know that was a whole you thing with the, 94 crime bill but anyway go ahead the problem that i've always had with the with the democratic party is that it has it is played to the sensibilities of its of its uh, constituents, right? Mm-hmm, so yes. that's fine it to to play to everyone's sensibilities and to their emotions like that. But when it comes to like action, when it comes to getting stuff oh, done, man. you have to understand that people are going to be thrown under the bus. Yeah, like mm-hmm. that's going to be how it works. You know, you you think of, um, and it doesn't help that, you know, a lot of the people in the you know who primarily go with the Democratic Party are like they're they're not good at talking about their actual problems and as far as solutions. So mm-hmm. you to to bring this to something like race, we have like <clears throat> you know, you know, African Americans, them coming, you know, it, it's not that they aren't that far from being free, right? So the problem though that happened is that well, we we weren't taught like some of the same things that uh, that other people were. So when it came to 
when there were things that were wrong societally or politically, the way, like you, we almost, I equate the way that black people would voice their opinions to like a child that's like screaming and crying. And what's the first thing that you do to a child that's screaming and crying? You pick it up and you hold it. You don't know what the fuck the baby wants. All right, oh, gotcha. It's screaming and it's crying. And so you just appeal to its emotions and make it feel good and then kind of hope that something stops and then maybe you'll learn what's going on. But I think that a lot of the laws that have been passed to help the black community have been on that level, have been on the things where it's like, okay, we'll just appeal to these little things, but it's not really solving big time issues. And I think that one of the other things too is, um, you know, coming down to the, the, the core, like the family, is something that is, and I think it's like seventy percent of African Americans are born out of wedlock. I think that's what it is. It might be. It might be more. <laughs> well, since you keep doing this to me every time it says no, something no, good, I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna do it back to I you. Meant, I'm we, sorry. Keep going. I was gonna say. I, I was trying. To <laughs> we've do talked the, about like, all this stuff, so that's why we're the, sitting yeah, here yeah. being like, uh huh. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. To, we have to be able to address those things. Like, why is it that me, a Nigerian who has come with, like, I I know my identity. I have both of my parents. We were, mm-hmm. we were raised a certain way. I've known from the beginning, it doesn't matter who's in politics. You think I need those motherfuckers? I don't need them. No. I just I don't I don't need them. Like now I've realized that I have I, I realized that there's a use for them for certain points, but mm-hmm. like even where I am just like economically, I you know, I, I make I make really good money and all this kind of stuff. But mm-hmm. like because I grew up with nothing, it's it's not. I don't see any problem with giving a good chunk of my money to go and to help with healthcare or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, like I just don't. It's like okay, but at the, at the same time, yeah. I still think that there's work that needs to be done with like that a politician cannot do. Like when you were sitting there listening to the debates with the last debate between Trump and Biden, you're hearing these two old dude, these two old white dudes talk about <laughs> things they've done for black people, and I was yeah. like. Why haven't? Why don't we just do this shit for ourselves? Like, uh, oh, we didn't like that one. No, no, no. I liked it because I talked. I've so I'm just messing with I've, me. I've told him, and and it's funny because I got a little retrospective one day. Um, or, no, introspective. I'm sorry. Um, mm-hmm. and I was I, I told him I was like, you know, and we were just talking like on the phone, and it was something I thought of. I was like, why are we one? Why are we still only? 13 percent of the population like, that doesn't make sense every other population has gone up like how are we still you know stagnant after however many decades then i told him i was like i said in reality i was like and this we talked about a, a guy you know who killer mike is yeah of course yeah okay, we, okay. we the Sluice podcast we do love some killer mike we have an episode called kill your masters oh <laughs> see now i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to go back and listen to yeah, that one right that way but um I think it wasn't, I don't know if it was him or somebody he was talking to or talking about, but mm-hmm. they were basically like how integration was actually probably one of the worst things that happened to black people. Mm-hmm. And I remember hearing that. I was like, God damn, that is, I was like, that's, that's fucked up. Like, hold on, let me go and look. And I'll, then that's when you read about like places like, like I told uh, Steve, where you read about Black Wall Street, you know, mm-hmm. and then you read about a uh, place like, uh, was it Rosewood? And then like, all these other right. small pockets of places that black people were per, uh, were basically being progressive and, and, and doing good. Now, unfortunately, there was always somebody, some well, white person came to mess it up. But the- I was like, in general, we used to, we had to look within, and mm-hmm. it was like, I was like, damn, what, what happened? I was, I, I told, I was breaking it down to see. I was like, we always got tripped up, but for some odd reason. Like after I'll say probably the sixties or seventies, and we haven't talked about this shit. I wanted to. It was like we then it just we tripped ourselves up, yes. you know. So it's like after a time where like once freedom hit, and it, God damn, I hate to say this. Once we couldn't legally blame somebody else, it mm-hmm. was like so. And again, I I would probably sympathize more. Like hey, we've it's like a, a bad habit, you know. It's gonna take just as long to get out of the bad habit as it did to get into it. It was like, but I was like, we started tripping ourselves up and then it just, it's not that great. Cause he'll bring up like, Oh, there's, you know, more black millionaires. Da, da, da. I'm like, yeah, but we're talking what a, a, a thousand people versus millions of people who aren't. Or versus- and at the end of the day, even though there are more. And so I, I know even myself mm-hmm. making, you know, you know, if you factor in my bonus being at, being at a six figure income, you know, mm-hmm. like, 
I still know that no matter how much money I make, I'm still one mistake away from being anywhere. It doesn't matter if it's me mm -hmm. or another black person who makes five dollars an hour, ten dollars an hour. We're equally one mistake away from being thrown in the trash, you know. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that is, you know, yes, we can use the argument that there are more black millionaires. There are more. But at the end of the day, all we have to do is fuck up one time and it's over. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's very different. And, and you know, it, it, it is very different when you when you're not black, you know. But then we also try to figure out, like, what's what are some of the ways to to still win, you know, despite all that kind of stuff? You know, let's not put ourselves in positions to get into any sort of trouble like that. You know, like we have to at some point take some kind of ownership and, yeah. and not be blaming. So, you know, one of the things, too, you know, after after the slaves got emancipated, you know, they pass the vagrancy laws. You know, you go to jail, yep. you have work. So going through all that stuff, there's at the end of the day, this the one problem remains. They don't have an identity. And they st and at the end of the day, one thing I've always noticed for uh, for black people or many black Americans is the desire to be seen, the desire to be just, be, just to feel normal or just to feel recognized, you know, like, and that's something that is really a uh, part of the problem. And so what, what I feel like a lot of, um, you know, I don't want to keep saying white people, but a lot of what they did is that, if, did you ever see that YouTube video, how to sell to the Negro? It sounds familiar. I may have, well, but I, I, it. it was made in like the fifties or something like that. And it was like, they love, flashy, uh, yeah. so don't sell them the practical thing, sell them the most high dollar. <laughs> yeah. thing they want to feel like they're the best, you know? And it's just like a lot of like who will break their bank accounts to this, day. Do it. to this day. Like we need to, we need to sit there and think about like, you know, what happens when, when you give someone some money, when someone gets comes across money, mm -hmm. so are there two things that I've that I've seen happen? It either gets like things are purchased to put ourselves in a position just to feel normal or just to feel like everyone else or something like that, or the money gets like split and shared and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And we have to be okay with understanding like we cannot do that. If white people really want to fix a lot of problems, cancel fucking Netflix. Cancel Netflix. Cancel all oh, these yeah, other money. Things. Stop buying, stop buying Jordan, stop buying literally get super, super duper practical. And I, I, I disagree with the, with the notion that, that integration was a terrible idea. I think that, well, it's, it's they said it, it was, Hold on, let him go. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I, yeah. I was saying that it was a good idea in the sense that it kind of, it slowed the progress of the homogenous mindset that a lot of white people had with their schools, like, okay, they're here. Then it, then what we should have done is kind of like what the Japanese people do Saturday school. Did you guys ever have a Japanese friend? That no, but I've heard about that. Saturday? Like all my Japanese friends that I had growing up, like you, you didn't hang out with them Saturday cause they had to go to, they had to go to school and that school on Saturday was a Japanese version of, of school. You know, so they learn things with their culture. It was, everything was done in Japanese. You know, they yeah. they worked harder on their math. They like we should have been doing that stuff. But again, it's for me, it's different because I I grew up in in a uh, you know Nigerian household. We knew our culture. In the summers, we had to study two hours every day before we went out. Mm -hmm. So like a, as a little kid, I knew about like you know, the workings of an intercontinental ballistic missile at an age that I shouldn't have to know about. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm but I was just God. burning yeah. that kind of stuff. <laughs> and like, um, and it's just not something. And, and I feel that it will hell the numbers show that people that come from non-American <laughs> culture, especially blacks are, they vastly doing better. Way more successful. Way brought more that successful. up too. But like well, that's the kind of stuff that we need to be able to we got to rip the band-aid off and stop thinking that it's something that white people are are doing wrong yes there's stuff that's there that's broken but what shit can we control 
and exactly. that is a harder issue. So to to your point, there's like a, a, a you you said a lot there, and there's I, I gotta say a lot back. No, you're good. <laughs> but this is why Mike and I always interrupt each other because no, where I was like, hey, I'm, 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 and, and I'm, I'm like, oh, no, hold on, let me let me finish because if not if not like you'll lose that train of thought that the guy's on. That's why we literally are sitting here with pads and pens because yeah. we'll take notes of like, okay, I gotta say this then and say this then because like we don't get lost that. in the sauce. Yeah, we so get lost quick. in the sauce quick. Sure, sure. So like to your point, okay, and you made a boatload of points, and this is, you know, part of the reason I disagree with socialism, okay? I was very poor, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I, too, make a six-figure income, okay? Yeah. I waited tables making, like, 22000 to to thirty grand a year, you know what I mean? Before taxes. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? And I was so all about Obama. I'm like, yes, health care, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. You know what I mean? It's coming my way. Yes, Obama pulled the lever. Ba Bing. And it's yeah. like, okay, it's coming. Oh, it's all the Republicans' fault. I oh, blame them. I hate them. I hate them. Yeah, get get it in there. And then all of a sudden it passed, and they're like, oh, yeah, you make too much money. I'm like, oh, what? Yeah. How is that possible? Uh, what? I make too much money? They're like, yeah, you, you can't, you can't, you don't qualify. You make too much money. I'm like, you are crazy. So, yeah. you know, and, and then what happened? My health care blew up. Yeah. A lot of people lost health care because they privatized it. It's not going to go away. Oh, it went away. Uh, I know a lot of people who own businesses and they all lost their health care or couldn't afford it. And then yeah. prices doubled. And then since I had health care, guess what happened? Then a lot of people got turned to uh, part time. Yep. People just started dumping. So we added all these jobs. It was so great. But really, you just added part time labor. You didn't add mm -hmm. full time labor. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is stuff I'd learned post Obama era, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Once I actually sort of got into politics and did, you know, a little research. Um, but my point is, is I, I dropped out of college my senior year, right? Mm -hmm. I, I was like, and to your point of saying like the Netflix and the Jordans and this, that, and the other, dude, I, I blew money. When I had it, it was gone. I, mm -hmm. I never put it into something good. I never invested in myself. I never saved it. I never did anything good with it. So it, to say that like, you know, I, and I don't want to say like a black issue, but it's a white issue now too because people feel defeated. Yeah, I, people I think, feel I the American think dream is dying. You know yeah, what I mean? I agree with you. It's it's all it is affecting all people. Exactly. But the I still think that for a group that doesn't have an identity, like it, you almost have to double down on that. I agree. Part. Yeah. And, and so from that point, I was like, listen, you know, my biggest fear in life was being a failure. Mm -hmm. Everybody's definition of what a failure is is mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. And I, I doubled down. I wound up getting two jobs. I was working 70 hours a week. I got some experience, got a job, worked my way up to management, got experience, built a resume. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now I have one of the best jobs I could imagine ever having with a lot of freedom and flex flexibility and, and, and make good money. Mm -hmm. Um and that's because I put in the time, I put in the effort, I didn't, I stopped feeling sorry for myself. And I know Mike hates the term, pulled myself up by the bootstraps. And I get it. If you don't have any boots to pull yourself up from, mm -hmm. I didn't have any boots either. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I, I didn't have anything to go off of. Like it was like I had a mattress, you know, so clothes and, and that was about <laughs> it. You know, I, I, I want to, you know, bumming places to live until i like finally got myself going but it yeah. and it sucked and it was a tough road but my point is, is like if you have the drive if you're competitive and i, I played mm -hmm. sports in high school i mm -hmm. played sports my whole life and the point was the guy who was the quarterback could throw the ball the guy who was the receiver could catch the ball it didn't matter your skin color it didn't matter anything it just mm -hmm. the best guy won won you know what i mean and in my opinion like, and that's why I would say, like, listen, like, I it, just to get back on pot, like, Trump sucks. Yes, the mega hat thing sucks. The, what the mega hat divide creates in the way we put labels on things to that point of you see that red or you see that fist, you, it, already, it automatically creates a feeling, so, right? Mm -hmm. it, and it's, it's, it's either positive or negative, and you judge that book by its cover and assume everything's the same. And what's sort of frustrating me with this, 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 lady the other day who sent me all this information she just assumed i was an ignorant white person and had no idea what i was talking about mm -hmm. and i was like well no i, I know hilarious i know every single thing you you sent me 
and yeah. I've read a lot of information about it, I still feel this way. You yeah. know, and, and that's to point of what Mike and I have is we have an honest conversation. But people yeah. who are white are afraid to have that honest conversation yeah. because it's just going to be like, you know, and that's that's why I kind of say, look, I hate what Trump has to say, and I understand how his rhetoric creates divide. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, this victim mentality has taken people over to the point where white people now want to play the game. And it's like, oh, I'm going to have a sex change. You can't say nothing now. And you're seeing these <laughs> issues with these kids. I'm serious. These yeah. teenage girls are now getting sex changes to boys because they're like, nobody can mess with me now because, you know, I, I, you know, I got disowned here or had this issue here. So it's okay if I do this. Now I'm protected. I, yeah. I got an argument with this kid. And mm -hmm. I told you about this. It was mm -hmm. a, a young black kid. <laughs> he had a cowboy hat on, mm -hmm. a Jewish flag behind him here. Jewish rainbow flag. A rainbow flag above the Jewish flag. He mm -hmm. basically fit six different narratives that I couldn't attack him on. So he yeah. had this attack wall proof wall built around him, and he would just shit talk people on the internet. It's like, I know what you're doing right now. You're just baiting somebody to say the wrong thing, and you're you're behind this protected wall of no touch zone. You know what I mean? Like, but why would you? What's the reason for wanting to attack someone on the internet? None whatsoever. No, it never he works actually out. attacked me first. Yeah, he made a duet of his. Yeah, he, he showed it to he, me. And now the problem is, I know I didn't help him because I'm an asshole and I laughed my ass off and mm -hmm. I was fucking with him heavily. Because um, yeah. I was like, look at this guy. I was like, oh, <laughs> like, he thinks you're whatever. I, and I'm, I'm a horrible person for it, but I, I love it. It's, I'm sorry. It's, not gonna, it's never going to stop. But. I saw. And well, I, my point was, I, I actually you, stop, tried to reach out to him, like, yeah. "Hey, let's have a conversation." Because anytime want, somebody wants to attack me, I'm yeah. like, "Let's let's talk." He totally ignored. Let's them. talk. Like, but I, it also you know, pissed him off. That he oh, it, it pissed me off. He ignored <laughs> me because I'm like, "Look, you just don't want to have the, like, you just want to stand behind this like Kevlar wall of protective yeah. mode, and I actually want to sit you down and be like, "Look, man, why do you feel this way? You know, like, let's talk. Why do you have all this?" I have to pull him back so many times. You know what I mean? He's like, oh, man, I, I want to say this. I was like, it, it doesn't matter, man. And he's like, no, but I was, I was like, Steve, if I'm telling you, it's not going to matter me, you, man. If people disagree, and that's why, like. He gets really hyped about I it. I don't just get mad. I get passionate. Yeah, he does. You know, I'm like, look, let's talk. What do you want to, what, if you don't agree with me, why? Let's talk about it and tell me why you don't agree. I just don't like this idea of like, oh, you got a mega hat on. Pfft. Oh, you got a BLM hat on. Pfft. Like, it, No. No, that's not how we solve anything. The only way we're going to get through this is talk about it. And if you're not going to talk about it, honest, Shut why up. talk about it? And we do we <laughs> yeah. listen to this other podcast? It was, it was black eye, white no, guy. Wait, here's the funny thing. This is how we actually came about. Yours. Well, no, don't don't go to that yet. But th it was this black guy and white oh. guy, and all it was was a black guy telling it literally how much, black guy, white guy, podcast. how much he hated like all these things, and the white guy's like, yeah, uh huh. Just agree with him the entire time. I'm and like, I, I sent it to I sent it to him to piss him off because I knew the white guy. I listened to the whole thing. He, I listened to like fifteen minutes. I was like, oh, this ten this episodes isn't... of shit. That's so <laughs> but I listened to it and I was like, ah, oh, it's not that great. And I was like, hey, Steve, I was like, uh, you should check this out. I was like, because what I was really doing is like, look, man, I was like, if these guys are on this, this, and this, and this, we need to get on this, this, and this, and this because I'm not a fan of what they're saying right now. And I, I'm, I was like, it can't be that many people listening to this because it's like, and it, it, again, it was, it was a petty thing. I'm not gonna lie to you because I was like, our conversations are better. We don't have the views. I get, I get it. I was like, in my mind, I thought our conversations were better because one, there was very little conversation. It was basically an echo chamber for mm. the, the uh, literally the black guy and the black guy was going off on some shit that you said he he said tea bags are racist and uh oh no, he soap. was like uh, he talked about soap was racist soap. coffee <laughs> filters were racist like and he's he's <laughs> like well because the coffee's black and the white has to filter through the white to get oh, good so coffee trolling then uh, no he was serious no he oh was dead and he and then dead he was talking serious. about he was like why isn't there any black soap not and, and i told steve i was like there actually is black soap i was like it's, it's pretty good for your skin too i was like there's black soap i was like did he talk about that and he was like no he just kept blaming white soap and this no, and, he, he talked about black soap he's like i switched from white soap to black soap but it was like, was like but that's like that's like a skin issue that's like saying like i i wanted to use dove but i broke out so now i have to use uh irish spring right you know it's like well 
Because uh, that's the other thing. I was like, this Irish Spring is so many different colored soaps. Why did he bring up white soap? I was like, what kind of generic soap is he using? First but, of all, but the white guys are sitting there like, oh, coffee. And the white guy I didn't nothing. think about yeah, that. The guy and they're like, well, all well Luke Skywalker <laughs> and Darth Vader was black, and it, it was James Earl Jones's voice. <laughs> I'm like, are you sitting? Yeah, I think they did James Earl Jones' voice because his voice is fucking awesome, and he yeah. sounds badass Seven as Darth Vader, Mufasa. right? Yeah. Like, but it, it, it's that. Not even, at that point, though, it's not even. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't seem like a black white thing. It's just a super hardcore, like super hardcore liberal thing, and that's fine. I have no problem with people who 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 are very very liberal, but there is a certain. Well, point. I think that's a race baiter more than yeah. liberal. Well, race baiting does happen in liberal. Well, I'm saying, yeah, <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so I've seen like, and I have again, I'm supporting I'm supporting the party this year, you know, but I just that type of way to go around that you're not going to win any people over and you might but it's very short-lived you know they might have released those episodes and that's because it's cool because that's the cool thing to do right now to show white people yeah. like that's all it's, it's not lasting you know when things get back to i'm doing like normal or whatever that's just not going to last and like the, the the type of content that you guys are creating you know, assuming that's like real, authentic conversations, mm -hmm. like it's going to be sometimes that kind too of stuff. real. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes too <laughs> real. It's going to be the kind of stuff that's very lasting. You know, and you know, I, I've had those kind of conversations, like you were saying, with someone. You know, and, I, and uh, you know, a lot of times, especially this this past year, when people when they were tearing down the statues and stuff, mm -hmm. um, you know, people were. Just, you know, we had a thing on heritage versus hate, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, what we're saying was that, like, first thing, just go read the secession letters for each state. They all talk about wanting to have slaves in there, right? Mm -hmm. Well, especially when they say this isn't about slavery um, or the Civil War wasn't about slavery. We were like, just read the letters. If if that's fine, if, if it doesn't say anything about slavery, that's cool. But they all say, you know, and some are, like, right to the point, like, the superiority <laughs> of the, of the white know, man. The, the, so it's like, let's, let's, Let's call that stuff for what it is. But here's the other thing that people don't really talk about. After the war, the, the South got raped, okay? Like, all of its, like, and I don't mean raped like they raped their women, but I mean raped in, yes. the, in the sense that like, they took everything. Yeah. The innovation, the machinery, anything that gave the South value, they took, and they took it to the North. In, industry, everything. Mm -hmm. And so what happened is that now you have some people and, and, they couldn't like they had to dismantle their current like city governments and stuff like that and the only way that they would let them start up their you know governorships and all that kind of stuff is if they they essentially had to like re-swear allegiance to the you know to the union to, to yeah to the union of the united states and so what you have now is a bunch of people that all they have to hold, like they have this mentality that America moved forward and there's no place for these people here in the South. So you constantly have generations of these people toting their rebel flags all over the place because they don't, <laughs> they think that America's moving past them. And it is. Yeah, it you're is. right. But we also have to recognize that. Yes, that is part of the history and erasing it only fuels them like they don't want to be erased. You know, mm -hmm. they don't want to be erased. So, and like you always feel like we finished the episode almost feeling sorry for them. Well, it's just like, fuck, dude, you didn't have like it started from way long ago. They took everything from them, you know? So, so all they have is the rebel flag, you know, and all uh, that kind of They say the South will rise again, but they'll get their the unholy piss shit kicked out of them by the military. You know what I'm saying? It's just more, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I'm know. from the South. I hear it all the time when I see the flags. Yeah. And it's one of those things. As a matter of fact, I even got a, a shirt talking about the statues where it says did you uh, actually get that oh i still if i wasn't too fat i'd wear the shirt but the shirt literally says it's a like a confederate statue or whatever and it basically says uh civil war and then it crosses out confederate and it says participation trophy yeah. and yeah i don't understand america is like all about first place oh, no. first place yeah yeah Why are we glorifying the fucking losers dude well like, see that's what i'm saying see that's the other thing and i've had this conversation they're like oh it's history uh, and those statues, and we, we we still go back and forth on this about the the statues. Well, one, they they had a he was telling me about a statue that's being ripped out. What was it like the Abraham Lincoln statue in um, 
Yeah, and the and Thomas Jefferson, Thomas and they were going Jefferson. for Mount Rushmore too, yeah. or something like that. But I was like, uh, but I even saw on the news where they were ripping out certain statues, and even the news reporter was like, "Well, I don't think they actually know the history of this particular person uh, because yeah. this person did this, this, and it was like an abolitionist or something like that." And it was like, "Hey guys, yeah. if you're gonna rip it, now, I, I told Steve this is not a popular opinion, but I'm all for rioting if the shit calls for it. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's no, like, no, it's yeah. never, it's never right. Protesting versus, uh, hey man, come so, on, why are you gonna rob your you own know, black business? No, I'm to, not like, talking you know about. I mean? No, well, see, I told you what I'm for. I said you go fuck up their shit, right. and then that's what I was like. I never agreed with fucking up your own shit because that's like that's like punching walls yeah, in your own house your, when yes. you're mad. Don't and then you. you're like, once you're not mad, you're like, I like that. God damn, I gotta fix I gotta this hole. That. Yeah, that's yeah, like, cool. Yeah. That's always been my problem with it. But I'll, I'll jump on that topic. But I was going to say, ahead. like, people should be, you know, with that same logic, tearing down Abe Lincoln things. You know, he, he gave a lot of the people when he freed, air quotes, freed the slaves, you know, emancipated <laughs> them, he gave, gave money to everyone for lost wages, like lost productivity. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. he, you know, that's like a uh, seems like not many people know about it, but it was kind of like, hey, bro, I know I know I let your work go, but uh, here's some money for, you know, like, hopefully we can be cool. You know, that little handshake happened. Wait, wait, <laughs> hold on a sec. I thought Trump freed the slaves. Yeah. <laughs> <right>. <laughs> no, he's just the second just best. Yeah, right, 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 right. Sure he is. The, uh, um, so I was just talking about. Thinking doing that. What were we just talking here? Talking about the statues they were tearing down. And Lincoln was yeah, yeah, okay. money. Like riding and stuff like that. I love the idea of burning things down and blowing it up. Only <laughs> if you're willing to rebuild it in an image that That's fits true. the community that you actually want. If you don't have the energy better to rebuild it and make it better, get the fuck out of there. You don't belong there. Because here's what happens. The same shit that happened when we blew the fuck up out of Afghanistan, when you leave a power vacuum, oh, or okay. not Afghanistan, ISIS. Iraq, yeah, when you leave a power vacuum, someone else comes in. And so my friends that are like in real estate, they're fucking drooling at these areas that are getting like torn up. Gentrification. <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah, go ahead, blow it up. Trader Joe's is going to go up there. Yeah, yeah. but see, that's my is going 10, 15 and they're gonna miles price your, They're going to price your neighborhood out and, and then you're going to exactly. go within the next and five And then it's going to be gentrification years. all over so again. You better be willing to build the stuff up if you're going to burn it down. Otherwise, get the, stay the fuck home, dude. So like, you made some points about the South that I wanted to comment on was just the I fact that like, well, so the, the points of the Civil War, and I would agree with you 100% that yeah, every single one of the states had, we want to keep slavery. <laughs> and they're the southern economy was based around cotton. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's what made the South thrive. So strong. Yeah. And that's what made you know, that's what paid the way paid the way for them to have an army, this that, and the other, funded the war. And yeah. when they pulled slavery out, that's also what devastated them. And then after that, yeah. you know, it came like, Oh, you owe us money, this, that, and the other yeah. and and the foreign countries also pulled their funding because Correct. they like, like Britain and stuff were like, hey, we kind of uh we we let our we stop slavery. It's not a good look for us to keep, you know, funding you guys. Right. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Guns and stuff. Uh, but the, the the problem that bothers me about the conversation is and it you know, we we I, we probably talked this about in an episode, uh whitewashing where it's like it drives me not like you I'm not use it wrong with the, right, but the <laughs> the statues is one thing when you're trying to erect them just to be an asshole, but the it, you know the same thing like we're close to I'm close to I live close to Gettysburg right. Mm -hmm. There's Which no way I don't want to take my kids and that's it's a park it's a museum but there have been multiple protests to tear them down. Oh really? And yeah, and Gettysburg's like no. But it's a museum, right? It it, it it it's a battleground. You can see like oh they they attack from here. You see you mm -hmm. know Stonewall Jackson, but you all see less of Grant, right? right? Yeah. yeah. But the point is, is what really drives me nuts about the idea of the Civil War is they also take away all the things that were also involved in it. And it becomes this white savior narrative that people don't realize because they're like, they're, you know, the, the, the North was not an issue like this is all about slavery. No. When, when you look at it, Lincoln added that like two years later. It first started, it was like, you know, the, the federalizing of the government mm. and the uniting union and railroads and all this other stuff and when we yeah. look back now commerce it, it's this exactly it's this whitewashing way of being like no it was all about slavery it's like yeah no 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 
you, you just throw this in here at the, the last, you know, fourth down to be like, yeah. hey, and by the way, slavery. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> but it, well, that was the kick and point. here we have this this white savior oh, narrative, like, oh, we were trying to save him. You know what I mean? What'd you say, buddy? Yeah. Doesn't that happen with every law and thing that gets passed? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like stuff gets stuff gets thrown in. That that's a common practice in in government. You know, Very true to tack something in on top of some other more meaningful stuff just because it'll it it sounds better. That's 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 common. That's what they do all the time. So we just talked about this because it's hilarious. It's like. The, and this is what pisses me off about the way they name stuff these days in politics. Like, oh, the Patriot Act. Well, if you don't agree yeah. with the Patriot Act, you're not a patriot. By the way, we're listening to phone calls, all your email <laughs> stuff, everything. We got access. Exactly. But you, you don't let you're not a patriot. And then you got the new Green Deal. It's like Carly, I both talk at the same time. What'd you say about it? Sorry, but no, I was just saying I missed the anniversary. I meant to post something about that. But then, oh. <laughs> then then you had the new Green Deal and it's like well, fifteen dollars an hour plus everybody gets a house. It's like, oh, you don't agree with that? Well, you want to kill the environment? It's like, no, I don't want to kill yeah. the environment. But, but it's new green deal. You have to agree. It's like, come but on. that's how they. Yeah, I said we talked about that's how they always fuck up bills or whatever. They, when they're like, it didn't get passed, and you know we were just doing this is to help black people be look better bill. Don't kill like, the puppies. But in there, it's like, hey, we're gonna uh, kick women in the face. We're gonna stomp puppies, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna grind up uh, baby gerbils for fun and make. Mats out of them, right? Like, but you didn't agree with the initial thing, so you're a horrible person. Like, right? Nah, come on, man. Like, I, it's like there's so clearly more. Yeah, it's like, but it, now that that's that's a that's politics, right there. That's they both, yeah. you know, they're like, we couldn't get this bill passed, and it would have helped you out. You're not. Patriot. I'm not telling you about the, you know, I'm not. I'm telling you about the main point, not the, you know, section sub, you know, one beat, whatever. It's like you didn't tell me about this other stuff. Like, no, so that's like Z A. Yeah, they're exactly. like way down here in the bottom <laughs> suffixes stuff, you know. Yeah, man. I also want to say one thing, and this is I want to apologize to you. So I we I have not said your name one time. I don't think we've said your name at all, and so we just so, started talking. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> what, what, so what? Uh -huh. proper way to say my name is Kahlo, uh -huh. um, but they, everyone just kind of it's just easier for people to say Kalu out here. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, so if you if you want to say it right, it's Kahlo, but. Kylo. Yeah, you can easily just use Oh, no, Kylo is actually easier because we were like, we were trying to figure out, yeah, I, I yeah. think it's Kalu. We said it wrong, yeah, but yeah. Kylo is actually not, that's not bad at all. But I would like to say. Um, his last name is my first name. Is, and so they just say Kalu on there too. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I was going to say it's funny because uh, I told Steve, I was listening to your podcast, and because now that I'm talking to you, I, I feel real bad about it. But I told him initially, he thought you were white. No, no, I don't think you're white. Oh I yeah, couldn't, he did. I couldn't tell who the black guy was. I was like, because I was listening, I was like, and it, all, it was uh, like I said, it was the the thoughts and prayers one. And I'm like, because one of you guys, uh, I'm not sure who I I, I couldn't catch your name, but strong, thick uh, accent, southern accent. Chris. Chris. Chris, and I was like, okay, this is the black guy, and then the next person talked, and it was uh, your, your other co-host, and I was sure. like, well, maybe this is the black guy, and then you talk, and I was like, yeah, this could be so the Mark. Mark would troll me for it. He was like, <laughs> you went to you went to Greenwood. That was the that was the the white high school, if you if you will. Uh, uh -huh. Like. Chris is Melungeon. That's that's I think it's a derogatory term, but like they kind of wear it, they embrace it. But it's it's a triracial isolate, and uh, so it's uh, I think it's black, Portuguese, and something else. And so his dad is that, and then his mom is Ashkenazi Jew, but he um, identifies and, and connects more with the black community. That's just who he grew grew up around. You know, so that's what who I thought was black originally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mark is just you know, Mark is black, and then there's me here. So. Oh, so there is. Oh, see, I I looked at your pocket. I looked at a, a photo, an and old photo probably had uh, that probably was, had Chris. you in the middle and two white guys, exactly. one to your left and one to the right. Yeah, that was Brandon. Brandon's just light skin. Brandon, yeah. Oh well, it was like a black and white photo, so I was like, okay, well, clearly yeah. you're black. And the other two, I was yeah. like, oh, these are white guys. But it's yeah. just so funny because I, I'm listening. And, and you got I David thinking, Webb. I was, uh, I was, so, yeah, that's the other thing where David Webb, um, he let me. Uh, you want to because you got white yeah, privilege. The, some lady, some black lady I'm called black. in and told David <laughs> Webb that he had white privilege. 
And even yeah. I knew he was I knew he was black, and I was like, "Oh damn, you fucked it's up like, your whole oh, arguments." I was like, "Your whole arguments now uh, mute because you yeah. thought this man was white just <laughs> because he was talking proper English." And then it's like he was like, "Man, well, I forgot what this." And they were like, "I'm, I'm He's black." Like, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, you were misinformed. I'm black. I'm black. And she, it was like she just stuttered her way through the next yeah, however many um, seconds of it, but it was just hilarious. So now. Whenever that happened, he he just said the same thing about you. I was like, I, I can't tell which I don't know who's. Yeah. I say, and I say, and that's a bad thing that I'm looking for. I say, like, but I know there's a black guy in there. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, there's a black guy somewhere in there. I, was like, I can't tell which one is black. I was like, I thought the I thought the the, the country one was, but then he yeah. then the, the next guy talked. I was like, I know it's two white guys and a black guy, so somebody's got to be the one. The country guy reminded me of Ralphie May so hard. Yeah, he he swears it, up and down it was Ralphie May. It, just Are you big into the, comedy? That's one of our biggest it, things here. Yeah. Yeah, we, we love comedy. Chris is like, he's a massive fan of, um, uh, damn, what's his name? Uh, black white. He, he died, a black guy, died a long time ago. Richard Pryor. Not Richard Pryor. You talking about Patrice O'Neill? Yeah, Patrice O'Neill. Uh, oh, that's so my he, man right there. He, he loves Patrice O'Neill. I have my slew of comedians that I like. And so, yeah, we're big into comedy, man. Well, he gets in trouble because he'll say something. You know who Tom Segura is? Lord, I was about to say your name wrong. I said, do you know who Tom Segura is? Yeah, yeah, I know who he is. Okay, so, you know, I don't know if you know, remember the one of his initial jokes, or kind of got him famous, was like the one where they did the first, he was doing the first 48 joke, and he was doing like the black voices. <laughs> this is cricket right uh, here. Yeah, yeah, so he'll, he'll do, the, he did that one podcast, and I'm laughing, but immediately I was like, and by the way, what he's doing, it's a joke from Tom Segura. I was like, he's got to explain it. Because I already, because he said, he said two different names rather than cricket. And I was like, before anybody gets mad at him, this is a joke. He's literally repeating almost verbatim the joke that was done by a famous comedian named Tom Segura. You know, it's like you know the funny. We uh, we used to do like those disclaimers, like like, <laughs> and then we started saying like, "Hey, if you think we're being serious, fuck you," and hit stop. You know <laughs> well, dude, that's what I loved about your intro because your yeah. intro is like, "Hey, if you're offended by this, like, fuck off," sure. basically. And I was like, sure. ah. You guys sound very smart too, by the way. I was like, I gotta get my dictionary reading back up. Uh I was like, I I, I make my son like uh do a set of words, like at least yeah. five words a week that are new and you know, big words, whatever, definitions. And um and it's funny because it was helping me and then I uh I stopped I didn't stop mm -hmm. giving them to him, but I stopped give, being the one giving them to him, not his mother does. And or my wife, I should say. But uh I can see the difference. And when I was listening to you guys, I was like Oh my Jesus! I was like, ah, well, I, I need to look at a dictionary before I talk to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I feel so stupid now. <laughs> well, I, I, I heard you talking earlier when I was trying to fix the light about like podcasting and kind of how it it, it sort of that? outlet or this that and the other. But um, the way it affected me was like it made the way it it made me do more research because mm -hmm. I didn't want to be just like saying stuff and be like that, that wasn't true white you know what i mean yeah it, especially knowing because i'm like okay i'm arguing with a black guy about racism i should probably do a little more reading on this stuff and i never help because i always right. call you racist yes yeah, so it, it didn't matter it's a fun thing i like to do so like it, it the way it just sort of like increased my knowledge level yeah. and people like in my personal level like how you know all this stuff? It I'm is like, hilarious. Well. It's we both have the same right. thing where now he's like I used to hear people talk and I just you know wholeheartedly agree with him like yeah you know what that does make right now I'm hearing people and I and because me I I I like I'm definitely I have to be objective in certain things and I I, I try not to use emotions and you, I basically yeah. say I use common sense. So now I'm hearing things. That's and, why it's and, called the reality of it. Yeah, by the exactly. Way. Living reality, uh, but. I hear things and I'm like, I, I, I mean, on the strength of being black, I want to agree with you, but you're not making any sense, man. Like, come on, you got to make more sense here. Like uh, some of the, the, the shootings and the, and the things that's happened. And I was like, cause I, I look at every case I see, like, especially because I have basically like a black Facebook and Instagram or whatever. Every time a shooting happens, everything that happens is brought up to me. I see you, they show me the video and I'm like, I was like, good thing these guys don't know who I really am. I was like, because they probably yeah. stopped shitting me shit. I was like, it's great that I get to see it all the time because yeah. I, I get to, not great that it's happening, but it's great that I can see it and, you know, comment. But 
I was like, a lot of times, or uh, I would say at least a third of the time, I'm like, nah, man, I, I, I can't agree with this one. Like, uh, who, like the guy at the Wendy's. I told him about the Rashad Brooks. It's like, like, yeah, he turned around and, and shot the the, uh, the taser. And I was like, but what if he had grabbed his gun? I was like, clearly he's making bad drunk decisions in the, in the moment. I'm like, so if he had grabbed a gun and the cop didn't know it, he was going to shoot at the cop. And I'm like, I can't say that the cop's wrong for it. I was like, they literally, I was like, the fact that he was fighting them, and they didn't shoot him or or successfully tase him or whatever. I was like, I'm surprised that he lived that. I'm surprised yeah. he got up from that. And the fact that he yeah. ran away and then turned around, I was like, Shh. me and Steve, I was like, hey, man, you got, I gotta, you got I, one. I got to give you guys both an, an honesty moment here because, <laughs> it, yeah, it, it's just this This is reality is you, you and, and to your point, you know, your friend's like, oh, I don't know. I don't want to say this. I don't want to come on and say that mm -hmm. because, you know, if a black person hears me say that or some of my friends hear me say that, they'll be like, oh, this is what my you, black think that? Are you, you think that? You think that? You, about you, you disagree with the, the narrative? Yeah, you're not in the club. And, like, the the thing is, is, like, as I, 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 I give me this controversial thing I'm going to say, but it's like, as a white guy mm -hmm. and what I hear in the white community, if you will, and... I'm I'm at some of these places where it's poor, racist, white people. I'm not gonna lie. You need to be vocal when you're like because the automatic expectation is like you're saying about the Wendy's guy, is like, doesn't matter. He was black. I don't care. It was all it was, everything was wrong because the guy was black. It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. That guy could have shot the cop in the face and punched him in the, and if they would have killed him, they'd be like, that doesn't matter. He's black. I'm like, look. You're making these people more racist and you don't realize it because they're going to sit there and be like, I told you so. It doesn't matter. We've done this. It doesn't matter. And mm. like you're reinforcing them to be assholes. Like you, you. And why don't we say, like, why the fuck are you drunk in the Wendy's thing? Yeah, he passed out in the line. Oh, come on. I've done that. I've got the munchies, man. Taco no, Bell. No, no. Hey, he passed out oh, in the yeah, line. Passed out. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, come on. That's you a dickhole movie on itself. What got you to that point where you, like, let's dig deeper than that. At that point, it has nothing to do with this race right there. Like, uh, nope. you shouldn't be drunk in the line. You shouldn't be passed out in the line over there. Don't mm -hmm. be passed out at all. Like, I, no one gives a shit, shit about you going drinking. No one gives a shit about you doing drugs. Do the shit at home. Like, your rights and your freedoms exist. Like, that, they end where someone else's begins, you know? And when you mm -hmm. put yourself in a position where you're going through and you're doing something like that, at that point, there's no more, there's no more rights for you there. Yeah. Like you're, you're, you're doing it all wrong by showing up there fucked up and then passing out in there. Dude, I'd like that stuff is just. He tried to get them. Like, he, he tried to talk them into letting him drive home. Mind right. you, still drunk. And they're like, you just follow me. It was like, that's not how it works. You get a DUI, and you go to jail. That's how that works. Like, you're done. Yeah. Like, sorry, guy. I, even the cops yeah. were nice. They were like, look, I'm I'm sorry, but we can't do that. So can you turn around? And that's yeah. when all this shit popped off. And it was like. I would have done the same thing if I were a cop. Listen, I I, I say. All cops would have. <laughs> yeah, I, I, even I, I tell my cop friend, I, you know, I bought a gun earlier this year. You know, and I was telling them first one. Know, uh, yeah, it's my first, not the first one I've shot, but my first one. And and uh, Welcome to you the know, club. yeah, man, I love it. It's a, a Sig P three twenty RX, and so uh, it's it's really nice. But I I told him I was like, look, you know, if I get pulled over or whatever, he was like, all you have to do, he said, the safest thing, put all your windows down, let him know that you have a loaded, you know, tell the model, tell exactly where it is, because we're open carry in Kentucky. All right, so really? uh -oh. there's no laws or whatever. You know, we can you can carry a gun and be fine. You know what I mean? And uh, so, but you have a bunch of I wish a motherfucker would type of people that are. <laughs> oh yeah, that's Texas all day. <laughs> Dipshits all over the place. But like we, uh, you know, I told him I was like I'm gonna I'll do all that and I'll keep my gun on me and you know I was like at the end of the day I'm not gonna be anyone's fucking martyr. You know. I'm just not uh, going to. Yeah, I do not agree like, with that. If you're having a bad day, it's going to be me or you, bro. That's, I mean, like, that's <laughs> that's what it's going to come down to, you know? Yeah. And he was just like, yeah, I, I respect that, you know, because I don't want to have some cop who's having a shitty time. He's getting a hollow point to the head or, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm not, uh, like, this is how I really feel, Steve. Cop, but I'm just like, but why would I want to get myself killed because someone couldn't keep their anger in check. I'll let them know exactly what's coming in here, but if they're going to get pull a gun and do all sorts of crazy shit, no, dude. Like, 
you're, you're going to earn this death. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Come get some. <laughs> smarter. But, no, I uh, agree. But that's just, I mean. I like your, I like your, uh, your opinions because they are pretty wild, by the way. And, it's like, <laughs> and I like, yeah. I was like, well, correction, they're wild to the status quo because you said something. You're like, I like to see some shit burn down. And I was like, I don't know if I agree with the cinema, but I definitely agree with the riot <laughs> part. I was like, dude, like, I've always told people, I was like, hey, everybody, like, when it, when something happens with a cop, they go, hey, they're human beings. I was like, okay, well, here's the thing. When that cop is being an asshole and he's threatening my life and he's doing things he shouldn't, if I just so happen to injure him, he should be a human being. Like, no, 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 that's not, that's not right. Like, whoa, wait a second now. I'm like, hey, here's the other thing with cops. <laughs> they're, they're grossly underpaid. They are very. Grossly. We talk about that all the time. I wanted to be a guy. I would never like, do it. No, and that that's another thing. We've always said on our podcast, like, I think that cops should serve in areas where they live. Like, yes. But then if you want something like that, you have to make the job of policing something worth the money. There's cops in, in our state that make $14 an hour. <laughs> oh, shit. Is this Come on duty? Are you talking about on duty? Like, actually going out into the street or somebody who sits at a desk? Like, I would never want to do their job. No. So it's like, so of course you're going to be pissed off a little bit. Of course you're, you know, their pensions are going to shit, at least in our, in our area. Like, and the police officers are the whipping, they're the whipping po post of everything. Whenever something goes wrong, they blame them. But meanwhile, people in the, in our community and in many other communities don't give a shit about local elections. So you keep electing the bad <laughs> Exactly. People bad judges, the bad, all these other people up there, the cops are just following orders. That's all that they're doing. So it's like, we need to take that shit way more seriously. And I think we also need to be like somewhat policing and holding ourselves accountable within our own communities. And you see all the other, like you see the, in, in here we have a very big Bosnian population. I think Bowling Green is the second most populous Bosnian city in that America. So Bosnians are crazy. I was like, Bosnia? And, wow. uh, so after the war, you know, this was the place that a lot of them came through. And, dude, they created their own, like, ecosystem, if you will. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They like, are everything. That's like they, Chinatown. They, they are strong yeah. people, man. Bosnians. So, yeah. They, they have their own, like, they We're loan no one, just but... to each other. They really take care of themselves like that. And the other thing, too, is that they will not leave, for the most part, and what I've seen at least, you won't see any of them struggling. You know, that's it's not a problem to have six of them living in a house, you know, yeah. but that's something that even we did. And then I start talking to the fact that that's just some, a, that's an Amer a non American thing. It's no problem. When I, I thought so too. Was, they would stay with our family for like a year or two. They would help raise us, they would get on their feet, and then they would go and do their own thing. And the same thing happens in a lot of these other non American communities where you'll see six, seven, eight of them living in a house now in my name in, in our town mm -hmm. you'll see them go and buy a four hundred thousand dollar you know like three thousand square foot house and or hell more than three thousand square exactly. feet house but they'll get something like that and there's like eight of them that live there be split that shit eight ways that's an easy fucking mortgage you know what right. i'm saying and they're all working at the same place so all the money is going in the same spot and all while that's happening they're developing their children to being even better people mm -hmm. and it's like if the black community even wanted to do something like that, you know how quickly it would it would take. And then yeah. also, also another thing that that really puts. <laughs> I mean, he's saying like, truthful things. It's just uh, we one, we haven't gotten the like, tool. A really good plane, a really good playing field is life insurance. Like you, people don't yeah. understand how one death can put you in a completely different tax bracket. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, I I have. Close to $2 million in, in life insurance policies. Now, I know that whenever I go, my family's set, dude. You know what I mean? Like, someone's going to be set. And it, it sometimes it takes that kind of stuff. And you people don't realize, like, how many, how many families are impacted by a grandmother or grandfather passing away and leaving epic shit tons of money. Oh, yeah. And it just completely changes how they are. If the black community start doing some stuff like that, Starting early with life insurance policies, it's like 20 bucks a month or something like that. And you have to keep a good, like, and this is the other thing, like for at least mine, mm -hmm. for one of mine that I have, I have to get yearly checks, check my cholesterol, check that other thing. That's mm -hmm. something that like, 
community. So it's like, that is another thing that keeps us accountable. If we're fucking serious about helping the community, stop eating the goddamn terrible food. Stop doing some of that. <laughs> and when you die, you're going to really set your people up and put them in a really good position to win. Let's just call it for what it is, man. We got to be willing to have those kind of conversations with ourselves. When I see black financial advisors here in our town, I fucking love them. And I'm like, what can I do to help you win? What can I do to help you go and talk to people in our community to be able to let them let them understand the importance of something simple like life insurance? Yes, there's other there's other ways to have financial solvency, but like now life insurance is a big is one. Die, you know, like that that takes. You know what I'm saying? Do you, do you sell life insurance? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> like, and by the way, if you go to my website, uh, <laughs> NewYorkLife.com. No, he's he's right because I I've used to had, sell life insurance. That's what uh, <laughs> I was like. I've I've had like three family members pass away. Uh, only one of them had life insurance, but the other two, it was like, okay, let's all get the money together to bury them. Let's yeah. all get the money together to Funeral pay off expensive. these bills. Like their kid and then their kids are the ones who usually are like, all right, well I'm handling the this bill. Oh, they were behind on this bill because they're so old or or whatever they're sick, whatever the case was. But it's always on been debt, not exactly debt. It, it got debt has always been passed on. Um and, and like I told you, my family is doing better, but in those times when it passed, it's like we were getting better. And I was like, I always wonder I was like because only my, I have a, her name was uh, Aunt Critty. It's like, but she passed away and she had life insurance. And mm -hmm. she was the only one where I heard nobody complaining about who put in what money to help out and who did what to help out rather than just like, hey, where are we going to have the repass? Where is the funeral? You know, that. But she had all the money and she had money left over for her kids. And I was like, wow, okay. So I got I to gotta ask you a couple questions because, y you know, I've been bugging Mike to get us another uh, black guy. Black guy. And um, so far, I've brought two black guests to the table. You brought one. Well, this is the second one. Oh, yeah, one. he's second. Okay. Oh, well, yeah, God yeah. Damn it. Come on. Um, and um, question, like, you know, one would be, mm -hmm. what is your definition of uh, white privilege? You know? <laughs> loves this I love this question. Look, I asked the white guests, too. I just want you to know that. Um, um, I would say... Um, for, for one thing, it's, it's, I think it's recognized, it's a recognized advantage, if you want to call it that, that you would have. Um, it's, it's hard. It's hard for me to see a lot of it because I see more class than anything. Mm -hmm. um, I see. Class That's what I've been people. saying. Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but I also realized that I am privileged in the fact that I know my identity. I grew up with both parents mm -hmm. and you can't tell me shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like I'm always going to say I'm Nigerian first or four American. I'm, I, oh, I even joke with my black friends that like, hey, bro, like they, they tell me they look at their ancestry thing and they're like, oh, I'm part Nigerian. I'm like, you still can't sit with us, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Probably a bad example to talk about what. what <laughs> no, 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 no. You are the perfect. No, you're the perfect example because you're not going to say the stereotypical answer. I got this big dig. I have like all this other shit. Like I work hard. Like I got <laughs> privilege. I, I feel sorry for you and your. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm the worst person to be like asking. Well, about. so so the reason I asked this is what because was that was going to preface into my next question okay. is like okay. <laughs> Great answer. No, no, no. See, and the, yes, you hit the nail on the head, and and. What I think, and the reason I brought it up is because I heard you guys talk about in the debate uh, podcast, the VP debate podcast, and you know the the reason it sort of rang a bell was because it was like the guy was talking about Appalachia, and I can promise you that that in that community that term does not fly because you're talking to poor white people and you're like, oh yeah, you're white privilege, and they're like, where's the privilege at? You know what I mean? They're looking around like, no, it's not, it's not here, and it's it's funny because that doesn't translate into that area realistically just because there's no black people there you know yeah. what i mean so you're just competing against other poor white people and mm -hmm. even in my community here there's not tons of black people you know what i mean like yeah. Yeah. and, and what's true. funny it, is it oh, go ahead i'm sorry what's funny is is when like you i always talk about like interpretation right so like mm -hmm. i had a guy come here the other day okay and he pulled in the driveway 
And I'm wondering, I'm like, what is this guy doing here? You oh, know what I mean? Yeah, you got so, like, yeah. it, it, just I'll tell you the story quick. So, basically, there's a flower pot sitting in our driveway. It was to the side. The flower was dead, right? This Amazon guy pulled in one of the private Amazon, like, white trucks, not the regular blue prime trucks, and it broke the flower pot, okay? Pulled away. I saw it happen. I, I didn't care. The, the, the flower pot was sitting there to get thrown away, okay? Mm-hmm. This guy comes back three days later. It's black guy, you know, flat brim hat, you know. What well, I'm just setting the preface for you because <laughs> you do see black people around here. They'll show up in all camouflage. It's it's, it's the reality of it. Yeah, I know. They see that look you made me. He's like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> you know, what I mean that that's yeah. a real thing. So the point is, the guy was a fish out of water, and it was very easy to identify. And he came into the driveway. There's a guy working on the house, and I work from home, by the way. So I see this happening. I'm like. Okay, like, you know, and I'm instantly in my head. Nobody comes. I live in the sticks, man. Nobody comes down my road Besides and then come people. in my driveway unless they 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 need, they need want something. Like, you're here to sell me something weird, and I don't even know how you found my road. Or, like, there's a problem because something's on the road, and you're like, why is this out here? You know, is this yours kind of thing? Like, something weird. And... I'm like, I see this guy pointing, and I had this stack of wood. I'm like, is this guy trying to buy wood? Does he want? Does he want wood? Like, what's going on? And if I, I want to tell you, if this was a, if this would have been a white guy, I would have had an attitude with him. I would have been like, <laughs> "What are you doing down here, man?" You know, what I mean, that kind of thing. But because of you know Mike and what we talk about, yeah. I, 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 I was like, look, we gave it a second I, I gave it. I was like, look, I can't go into this with an attitude. I have to. I have to. I had to change my mind. It was just like. Because of the culture the way it is today, I, I, I was pissed, but I was like, look, just because he's black, I was nice. <laughs> and I'm, I'm dead serious. Yeah. If he would have been white, I would have been a dick. I would have been. Yeah. And, you're, but, you're not responsible for your first thought. Right. You know, I, I don't know if you've heard that. You're responsible for your second, those, you know, afterwards. But your first thought, if you're going to be like, oh, fuck, that's a black guy. Like, you don't feel bad for that. We're all, uh, we're all a... Um, we're all just walking, talking, like, responses to what the fuck is happening right now. Like, Absolutely. we're going to be that way. Like, uh, I had to do it, like, you know, during the time of Me Too, you know, before I, you know, I'm in a job now where I work remotely and all that kind of stuff. But, like, when I had an office, if white women came to my office, I was annoying people with how loud I talked because <laughs> my door was wide open and then I was talking louder. Because no one's going to say I said anything. And these girls will come and be like, hey, how do I look in this? And I'll be like, you look fucking terrible, Erica. You know what I'm saying? No, I (laughs) like it. So it's that kind of stuff. But yeah, you just you're not responsible for the, you know, for the first thought. But yeah, uh, damn, you touched on some other things I want to talk about, too. But like to that point, I was nice. I was I was instantly absolutely like I I was nice. Changed my tone of voice as if I again, if you would. But my point is, I knew me living where I live in the sticks on a hunk and bunk and road, yeah. my attitude towards this guy, if I would have given him shit, he would have instantly been like, oh, he's racist. Yeah, you, <laughs> you know what I mean? Switch, you got a code switch. You and, think I, like, I don't talk to people the same way. Like when I'm, when I'm like working with a customer, if I'm doing like a system deployment or something like that, mm-hmm. you would know that I obviously just like you guys said, you wouldn't know that I'm like, I'm sitting here, you know, if I'm in a zoom meeting or something like that and I have my camera turned off or something, you know, like I'll be sitting in gym shorts, a uh, you know, flat brimmed hat, just kind of chilling out. <laughs> like, all right, buddy, what we're gonna do is connect to the server. We're gonna do this, and you know, I'm, exactly. I'm having these kind of conversations. But like when I'm with my boys, it's completely, it's completely different. different. Right. Like, learning to code switch has got to be something that is that is important to white people, black people, everyone. I agree. Like, you just have to know your audience. Yeah. And, like, yes, like, and to that point, though, like. And the I was nice to him. white voice. Yeah, I was <laughs> nice to him. He was super nice to me. He apologized for the flower pot. He offered to buy me a new one and this, that, and the other. And it was weird. And and because of this, I like I went back inside. He left. You know, I felt real good. I thanked him. I was like, no, you know, we're gonna throw it away he anyway. Called me it was, about it. I did. I called him. I was like, I got to talk to you about this. You know, because that's what I do. You know, anytime something happens like that, I you know I, I talk to Mike about it. But and I actually went back out after that, and, and I, I I made a point to talk to the guy who was working on the house, who was white. And I was like, look, man, that's why you can't judge a book by you know every book by its cover. You know, it's like, <laughs> look, you you come in with a preconceived notion, and that's what yeah. even as a white person you deal with that with the Trump hat. I don't wear the Trump hat, and I think you're an idiot if you do. I'm not gonna lie, but yeah. my point is, everybody just assumes, oh, you you support Trump, 
dumb redneck. And I'm like, no, man. Dumb racist no. redneck. Yeah, racist. Right there you go, racist. And again, to your point, I was wearing a same crime, different time t-shirt, but nobody could see past the red hat. They just yeah. want, and I did that intentionally knowing that would have been yeah. the outcome. And I was and an I proved asshole. Like, right. I was like, eh, I'm not really going to pay attention. And I'll be goddamn. They did. If, <laughs> like I said, I had they 20 people did. like, get him, Mike, that goddamn hat, blah, blah, boo, yeah. dump Trump, fuck and Trump. Like, and I was like, <laughs> and then I was like, did you listen? They were like, and then the people who I said, did you listen to it? Only like four or five of them responded back with different than what everybody else was saying. And I was like, yeah, exactly. I was like, you guys understand what was said. Like, he agreed with me and I agreed with what he was saying. And it was like, yeah, this was a good conversation, guys. I don't know if you think we fist fought in the middle of it or something, but <laughs> like we were in front of each other and we did not, we didn't raise our voices or anything. It was like a perfect conversation. It just was interesting. Yeah. And, and when you are able to like sort of let your guard down a little bit. So uh, for example, so I, I drive a, I drive a big ass truck, right? So I have that and I go mountain biking and I do all this kind of shit. And so like, whenever I see people, you know, they see <laughs> my, they see my big truck, they see my bike, whatever. This actually happened a few weeks ago. I went out on the trail and, uh, Everyone, you can tell people are surprised. They're like, well, I'll be goddamn it. <laughs> <laughs> that boy's on a bike. I think, man, what kind of bike is that? You know, it's <laughs> Lovecraft country, but he's the white guy being a black guy. Exactly. Vice versa, yeah. You know what I mean? And so, like, we'll get to riding and we're talking, and the, you know, they get comfortable and they'll be like, hey, I've, I've been wanting to ask you this for a while, man. Like, you know, and then it's always, you, you, here we go. Like, where you hold your breath. They're just like, they're like ah, what are you going to say? All right, so so I was listening to little Jay Z the other day, and, uh, <laughs> and, then, and then they said they said this word. And I was feeling the music. I really love what was going on, but I like your I accent. Really want to say that N word, but like, what? Why? Why can? Why can y'all say it? But like, you know, like I don't mean nothing bad by it. You You're know? killing like, them over uh, here, man. <laughs> yeah. it's like, that's what. And, and we can't we can't be afraid to have those kind of conversations. Yes, it's sometimes it gets exhausting having to do that kind of shit. But it's like that's part of it, man. We got to be. I'm like, a, I'll tell you right you now, are. my favorite part, and Steve has done this, but other people have done this. When I hear like once I break that ice with a white person, usually, yeah. and they realize like, because I, I I'm a big guy. I don't know how big you are, but I'm like six yeah, two, yeah. and I'm yeah, three hundred plus. Five, three, you yeah. said how much? Six five three ten. I God damn, dude! I was like, I just outweigh him. He but makes he's us look small. Yeah, man, shit. Yeah, giant. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it's like that once they realize, like, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not crazy. I'm not gonna hurt him or whatever they're thinking. Then I yeah. usually get the hey. I'm not racist, but and I love and I tell Steve, I was like, yeah, I ah, shit here. Go, get, go ahead, give yeah. it to and I'm always like, smiling. Get twisted, Bernard. If your daughter's thick, I'm gonna try and fuck her. You know? <laughs> well, well, sir, don't I'm I'm it, married. Dude. I don't want I don't want no problems, baby. I love you, <laughs> you and know? only you, baby. Uh but no. <laughs> but it's That's funny because I yeah. tell him this all the time. And even sometimes he'll do it. He'll be like, Look, I'm not trying to say, Ah, oh, I know it's good. Come on, Steve, give it to me. And yeah. I just walk because I'm like, what are you gonna say? I was like, uh, only uh, only maybe once or twice I've been shocked. But most yeah. of the time, I'm like, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> and it's like like the N-word has been so many times. But there's just like certain things. and It's always when they're drunk, you know? Oh, no. This was this that's, was that's sober. That's the only time white people have the balls this, to say I'm it tell, No, that. this was sober. But see, the most the people who are sober and who are, I, I, I say the bravest are usually older white people. Like, little white women have asked me some of the, the funniest shit in, my, in, uh, in the world. And I'm like... Ma'am, how do you know I won't crush you that right now, little white lady? Yeah. But yeah. but I, I answered a question or whatever, and I just find it so funny, like what you just said. First of all, you yeah, I would I'm afraid of you right now. I was like, <laughs> so I was like, this one six, six five three ten. That's yeah. a big bear right there. Yeah. Shit, I'm it, it is, it I'm six two three forty. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I walk in, you know, I might be at the 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 gym. So Chris trolls me hard on this because he says <laughs> that I go in there when I go to the gym, like I'll be in like cutoffs and, you know, like mm -hmm. I'll be, you know, I'm a, I'm a big guy, I lift weights and everything. And so, but because I know that it's an, it's intimidating to a lot of people, I have to play the card. So I'm in there and Chris, he says this to me. He, I, he says, I walk in there and I'm like, nice glutes, Barry. <laughs> Love your form. You know, like I'm that type of person when I go in there. But dude, it's, it's, a, it's like, it's honestly something that we all have to learn to be able to do. Look, we understand that 
that stuff exists. We understand mm. that people are not responsible for their first thought. They're going to see a, a big black dude and they're going to be like, oh my God. And also like, but that's that's the game, dude. That's the game. Like if, if like, and I had to put like, yes, there's going to be stuff that's going to annoy me. And when I don't want to put up with the shit, like I just, I'm clear about saying, hey, I don't feel like playing the card today. Like, and then you can just turn on being the big black guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and just do that, you know. It just works to my advantage so many times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so like, I, it's it, we have to be okay with with having those. And if the more that we are fine with having those kind of conversations with people, uh, then and it's not even so much about being like, we shouldn't be so quick to throw people in the trash when they ask those kind of questions. I yeah, agree. Yeah. If they have anything like that. Because they are genuinely wanting to understand. And the moment you toss someone in the trash, that can affect, like, that starts a butterfly effect of how <laughs> exactly think of you and how they'll, like, perceive everyone. So this, like, I see my opportunity when I talk to people. And I, I'm not, put, how I talk is no, like, it's there's nothing different. I'm just, it's, I don't even really have an accent, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, it's just... I'm just a product of like my upbringing, you know what I mean? Yeah, I was gonna say I, can, I don't hear anything. I, were you raised in Kentucky? Uh, for the most part, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh you were back and forth to some other place? No, no, it was. I was well, I he was, was born in Lansing, so. Like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he did. I'm sorry, you did say that at the beginning. Uh, yeah, then lived in Bloomington and then came down here, but I just, you know, I had both of my parents are professors, you know. Oh, no, and there's so no way you're gonna get away with that. Yeah, bit, <laughs> yeah you, you like. An, do better enunciate. You know what I mean? yeah, I'm not gonna lie. With your parents being professors, I'm surprised mm -hmm. to hear you're libertarian because I went oh, to college. Professors are usually liberal. And I went to Penn State, and yeah, it was yeah. like super liberal. And I was definitely liberal. And then I was like, yeah. this doesn't you make any sense. You, you started making some money, and you got conservative. That's yeah, see, I tell, <laughs> dude, <laughs> I have I not said no, that I same told, thing I said, to that's you? What happened. Look, I've said this. I was Charles like, listen, Barker listen, said, Charles Bark. Almost everybody who grows up like broke or poor, and then they get some money. They, they everybody's like, a I'm Democrat. not giving it away. <laughs> yeah, everybody's a Democrat until they make some money. And they're like, I mean, I don't want to say this out loud, but you know, uh, I do I agree with the Republican <laughs> uh, tax, the, 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 the tax plan they got going. It was like, and then they might even pull back. But yeah, listen, I was Democrat as all <laughs> hell, and then I started making money, and then I made a little more money, and then I made a lot of money, and I'm like, you know what? <laughs> yeah. I think you Don't should probably have to pay your way. He you was know conservative what I mean? when I met. <laughs> it's, for me, and but I, I think I guess the the difference is, you know, maybe it's not a difference. I don't know. I we did grow up on welfare, you know, and um, and I and I see myself as a shining example of how it could work and i think that it's worth taking the chance you know mm -hmm. and paying whatever and if it's if it's health care like i say okay give everyone health care that's fine what next can we you know i want people to be at a position where it's like i have nothing else to blame but myself i agree so where i am 100%. and i'm willing to put as much money as i as i can to afford to put people yeah or as i can afford to get people to a point where they finally say, oh, the reason my life sucks is Isn't because me. I'm kind of a piece of shit. It's like, it's all because of me. And see, that's why I would look. Then we will solve the problems. That's the place where real solutions come. I told Steve, I was like, anything that's wrong with my life, now, I'm, I am the one at this table, and virtually you're the one at the table, that doesn't make six figures, but I'm not bad. It's like, I'm I'm getting closer and closer to that. I was like, mine yeah. is pretty good now. That shit um, doesn't make you, bro. It, it, my, no. no, 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 but I'm saying, but I'm just saying that as, as, as that I, I see my progression, but I can't. I've always told Steve, I was like, I've never used the all oh, the white men keep me down. The white man's, I've had people say it for By me. Way, we appreciate that, yeah, exactly. When you I've, don't, <laughs> I've, I've had people say that for me, and I was like, I, I don't know, they just didn't call me back, you know what I'm saying? Or I'm like, well, I know this job, I didn't do that great, so yeah, or, or something like that, but. I've never in my life actually been able to pinpoint where a white person held me down or they were in charge of me where they held I, me down. I gotta, I gotta yeah. say this at this point though, because he mentioned this about having, you know, white right. women in his office. And you just said that right there about, you know, the white man holding you down. And look, I, 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 as you know, I've been a manager and I've hired and fired people. And when I was in that role, <laughs> oh, I, I, I can't lie when I, I hired Mike. Okay. in in. 
it yeah, I went, I used to work. It, it started from a bad place because I was like, look. Because he was a dick to me from the goddamn <laughs> interview on the phone to the interview in person. <laughs> we're not going to talk about that. But the point. <laughs> no, that's the part. That's the part. You were being an absolute asshole. Because he didn't know how to use Google. No, but, you uh, talk, there's no goddamn Google. Here's, here's look, what we need look, to do. No, wait, no, no. no, no. We talked second. about this story like you, a thousand no, no. times. He didn't by hear now. the story. He All right, I got to pee. All right. I've heard the story like 10 times. Come back quickly. But no, basically what happened was I had. I put it in on, a, on his website. Mind you, I didn't put in for where he was at, his location. Because mm-hmm. it's a big company. And I was like, I didn't, you know. And so when I put in, I just put my resume in. And then they called me with the places that was closest to me. And I was like, okay, cool. And I called him. And he's like, yeah, how you doing? I'm like, I missed his call. And I called him back. I'm like, hey, how you doing? This is Michael, blah, blah. You know, I said my name and everything. I'm like, um, yeah, do you get me? He's like, yeah. So what's going on? I was like, uh, so what do you want? And I'm like, well, you, you called me. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, and he was like, oh, um, yeah, so we can do an interview on this day and blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, cool. Now, while he's saying it, I, I have the company up, uh, you know, about them, all that stuff that you're supposed to do. And I'm looking, I'm like, I don't see, I don't see an address. I don't see address. So I'm like, okay, hey, uh, Steve, by the way, um, where are you guys located? So, you know, I, I know where to go on Monday. And he's like, ah, it's on the internet. You can look it up. No, and then that was it. And then he hung up, and I was like, "I said, what a dick." <laughs> and uh, matter of fact, at the time, at the time, um, I had got laid off, so I was like, "Well, I might as well take this for some good, some good interviews because I haven't interviewed in a few years or whatever." And uh, so I was like, "I'm gonna go anyway." And when I get there, I'm dressed up, mind you. I got. Uh, Anything that you you know you're supposed to dress up. I had a tie on. I had a button up shirt. I had my dress slacks. I had my dress shoes. I had a little uh, leather uh, binder that I still have to this day. Had all my information, extra resumes, whatever. Um, <laughs> and so I meet him, and I'm like, I walk through the door. I'm like, Hey, how you doing? Uh, my my name is Michael. I, I'm here for uh, for Steve. And he's like, Yeah. And mind you, I'm talking to him. I'm like, Yeah. And he's like, Uh huh. So uh, what, what 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 do you want? And I'm like the interview and he's like oh okay okay yeah yeah yeah. come on in the back uh let me um yeah come on and i'm like what the <laughs> fuck is going on here <laughs> like why am i the only person who knows about this and he and he said i look like a salesman but i was like i'm sorry he didn't dress like up salesman. like a person on the interview i was like yeah. i didn't i didn't have i was like it's the summertime so i didn't have on uh, um no it wasn't the summer it was no, winter time i had cold I, I had a jacket on over that so it's like I, but i didn't have you know, a suit jacket. I just had like a, yeah. a leather jacket. But he's just being an asshole on a dick. Now, mind you, I will give him credit that two hours later, we're in there laughing and joking and talking about everything under the sun. But initially, I was like, you were the biggest asshole to me. Like, I don't even know why I worked there because you were such a dick to me. <laughs> it's like, if it wasn't for that conversation afterwards, I was like, it, it would have been horrible. But I just wanted to say that because he always likes to pretend and jump over the fact. Like, oh, yeah, Michael did. I'm like, no, 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 no. You were a dick. Uh-huh. Were you guys in tech? Is that what the huh? Were you all in tech? Is that what the no, no, no? This was uh, a company called Fast. It's like a manufacturer. I was an account manager oh, okay. for him, and he okay. was the he was the manager of the store, which I didn't know he was basically two almost two feet out the door because yeah. they had screwed him so bad. Literally right before I got there, with this whole store moving, all it is it was uh, crazy. Well, was, I was gonna say that reminds me of kind of like my first like tech job. Like my, yeah, my you can do a, was kind of a he was kind of a dick to me, but it was in, it was in a good way. No, this guy's a dick in a bad way. <laughs> well, well, like he, he told me, like, and it's the the one piece of advice that that has really shaped a lot of like how I live and stuff. He said, uh, you know, in our field, we do you know we may do a lot of scripting or something mm-hmm. like that, you know, writing a script or something. Yeah, stuff. and he said that you know. If, he said one thing: if you if you live your life and work for me like a script, I'm going to write a script to replace you. Oh and, shit! <laughs> and it's just like I like that. that that changed everything, you know. And it's like for me, that taught me that you always have to be malleable. Mm-hmm. So learning to code switch, learning how to talk to different people in different ways, mm-hmm. learning how to do all that kind of stuff because there's always going to be something out there that can replace you. And in this age of, you know, we're all on apps and stuff like that. There's, there's apps that are out there that are essentially, uh, you know, a combination of extremely well-written scripts mm-hmm. that are doing things that, that 
humans were doing or, or should have been doing or something like that, doing better, you know? So it's like, you know, you think of something like, uh, you know, when we talk about jobs, okay, that's mm-hmm. always a big thing. I don't think that most of the jobs that are there need to be there. Like, I think that, the, <laughs> I think that burger flipping is an insult to the human brain. Yeah. I just think that it is. I think turning screws at a factory is an insult to the human brain. Like, Uh, dude, we are so fucking smart and we have the ability to be so powerful and to be able to do so many things. Why would you reduce yourself to someone who turns a fucking screwdriver or, or flips a burger or something like that? Like, this should be done by technology. That's why I'm saying, like, a well-written script. Everything should be automated. And I think that <laughs> you know, one of the, the issues in in politics is that they are, and this is sort of like switching gears, they're blaming, in, in some places where things are automated, they're blaming immigrants when they should be blaming computers, you know? And and the problem is that computers don't give a fuck about your emotions, you know? Oh, man. It, it'll, it'll work. <laughs> It doesn't care about your sensibilities or anything like that. It'll just continue to work and you can complain about it all the time. But at that point, when you get replaced by a machine, that should be the moment where you decide, let's go do something. Let's use this brain for real. You know? Um, now, that is a so very, very decisive idea. <laughs> But like, I ju- and maybe I'm speaking from a place of privilege because I understand a lot of that stuff. But the last thing, if I didn't have my tech, you know, like background or something like that, mm-hmm. bro, I'm not going to be flipping a burger. I'd sooner sell drugs. You know? <laughs> uh, you're right. Yeah. I'm not going to be. At least you learn business sense and you learn all this other stuff. It, I've told drug yes. dealers in their life, I was like, man, you should sell something besides drugs. And they're like, what? I was like, yeah. you would be an excellent salesman for, yeah. I, I, used to, I used to say cars. Cause yeah. I didn't, I didn't really. Oh, I was like, of... I was, yeah, I was gonna say, I, yeah, a lot of ex drug dealers are cars. They have some oh, yeah. pimps. I knew some pimps when I sold yeah. cars. I was They're like, good. both ways. But uh, <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> I, your, your, <laughs> what you just said, that your opinion is, is, oh man. I listen. Let's get this one in the can quick, cause I, his opinions. Oh God, I can't wait for the response and the comments. <laughs> cause I, 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 they're they're fairly new to us, and I just yeah. want to go through them and be like. Hey man, this guy was pretty right on this, and just seemed like, no, fuck that. Why would he say this? I was like, because that last one you made, I was like, oh boy, that goes to that bootstrap shit, you know, work with your back, all that. I was like, ooh, them trade. My, I know at least ten people who do some type of trade. <laughs> they screw job all day long. You know, if it makes if it makes people pissed off, then your job is done. At least at least you fucking felt something. I'm so sick of this society right now where we're just. We're all hooked to the same IV and everyone just is is all about the same stuff. Like at least something that we said got you to feel. Uh, if, you feel like, yeah. if you're pissed about it, then okay, be pissed. Like I'm not gonna lose sleep over it, you know. Like if you wanna if you wanna talk to me, you can I'll invite you to my podcast. We can absolutely, absolutely talk. And it's not gonna be one of those things where it's about winning or losing. I'm just gonna listen to you, you know? And you can tell your friends that you destroyed me or something or chris or mark or whatever and mm-hmm. that helps you sleep better than that helps you sleep i love and, and i love those kind of conversations because oh, so i fun. love executions you know that's so i like this. people say something really dumb and like it's like uh-oh you uh, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i had a preacher come on for one of our episodes and he was talking about how he was how he equated um abortion to um, them loading the slaves onto the ship. So I was like, ah, oh, what? what? You know? Yeah, I was like, what are you talking about? You know? And he said, like, he was, he equated to that and he was equating it to like the Holocaust, it's like throwing people in the thing. And I was like, look, bro, I don't agree with that. You know? So, <laughs> so- we, had, we had good conversations on that. And then, of course, I had another preacher on where I told him, like, look, I know where my name is the God of Thunder. Kalo is short for Kamalo. That's the God of Thunder. Really? And it's like, yeah. And it's like, your, you know, Christianity, everyone knows that, like, whoever whips the ass, everyone's just going to adopt their thing. That's mm-hmm. history. You know what I'm like, you think South America is Catholic because they want it to be? No, y'all fuck them up. It's okay. Like, let's just call it for what it is. Yeah, you know, this right to history. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I said, 
I can't see Christianity other and like as anything other than the master's religion. And that's fine, but it just kind of makes me a little sick when I see black people like thanking God for all the shit that's happened to them. I'm just like, ugh. So, you know what I mean? yeah, God damn no, it. No. I, all right, man. Hold on. You, what are you guys? You, you, I want to be on your show so uh, bad. Uh, no, wait, wait. He, <laughs> you, you cover so much shit when you talk that I'm like, I got to I got to say, I got to say, I'm like, oh, wait, hold on. Hold on, my. So he's not even writing it down. That's how I well, know. I mean, I'm just letting it flow, and this is what's great about these types of conversations. This, by the way, I noticed you guys do one hour podcast. We never do one hour yeah, podcast. We Ours tried were, so hard. Yeah, it winds up being a five hour thing that I break up in all these different clips because it just it just rolls. Mm -hmm. um, but to to the original point of the employment thing is a white guy. And you said with wow. the with the a lady, said that. it's like yeah. And I, I'm going to come back to you that that whole point of what you just said there because I had a lot to say about that too. But I, I got to get this out quick. So like the the employment thing is like okay, when you hire someone who's black and you're the white boss, mm -hmm. I I've had this happen to me where someone's like I'm gonna I'm gonna have you know I'm gonna tell HR you're racist this that, and the other. And I'm like I have never done. If anything, I've treated you better than I did my white employees. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, so you have this in the back of your mind with this culture we've created, this quote unquote, and I hate to say cancel culture, but it's basically what it is. It's like, if I hire this guy and I have a problem, can I reprimand them? Because if I do, or is it going to be racist? Like if I go to promote people and I gave three people the same test and the person who came in last in that test happened to be black. I'm good. To, I'm just going to get called racist. It, 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 the test score, and I've, I've I've talked to other white people who've had the same thing happen. Mm -hmm. But the point is, is like it, it gives you a sense of fear because you're like, ah, you're going to hold this against me. I don't I don't need that. So you just won't hire that person mm -hmm. on the, the on the sake of I just don't want to deal with it. And yeah. they might not be that person, but listen, the guy who did this to me, I did not think was that person. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Was, and, and I was like, somebody ah, had my show. And, and, the, and the, yeah, <laughs> don't say that. I'll, ed I'll edit that out, but it's like, and, and, and they, 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 you know, he, dude, the guy was falling asleep at, at, at the job. He was showing up late and later and later. And dude, I gave this, I helped this guy in more ways than none. Even after he said all that stuff as yeah. his former boss, I wrote him a letter of recommendation yeah. to his next job. Oh, you didn't tell me that part. And it's like, bro, you, you still. After you tried to beat me over the head and say I said like I was racist, I still wanted to help you. Yeah. And it's like, listen, it, and Mike can back me up on this. I then after after I hired Mike and hired what we call White Mike, we had two mics. Yeah, we had we had uh, Vanilla Mike and Chocolate Mike, <laughs> and uh, I hired a black female. Oh man! And she that's... listen. She was Foxy Brown coming at you. She had she had the she fro. Was super militant. She was super militant. Yeah. She was aggressive. And she's like, huh. not like talking. you know. And I was like, I would go to Mike and be like, Hey, Mike, can you ask her not to? Uh, <laughs> and can you? And ask I was like, Steve, she's not. I was like, man, but I'm like, listen, bad. Was... okay, I'm white. I'm yeah. a male. She's black. Yeah. She's, she's a female. A female. Yeah. I can't yeah. fuck with that. I yeah, can't and, fuck with white women. And she had a lot of I, attitude. I can't. I'm a white dude. I can't say anything to anybody, I, I or I'm getting a lawsuit. Shit on group of people in all of America is the black female, one thousand percent. Well, you said say that one more time. We didn't hear the. Uh, it's like under their mis, not mis. I guess underrepresented, essentially shit on group in in all of America. Oh, I told black. Steve. I said the 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 most. Like, but listen, if the you look at if, the, if, like black woman, uh, women of if, color actually. If but, you yeah. look at women of color, they are the strongest out of. Oh, Unfortunately, yeah, when it comes to like graduating, like, you know, yeah. graduating yeah. success, yeah. making money. The the black woman wakes a lot more yeah. money than the black man. But, but they, people are afraid of them, though. Yeah, and there is that perception there. But my point was, as a white guy, it's like you're, it you're was uh, so look, funny. I'm I am cancel culture one hundred and one, bro. Like I'm gonna get they're gonna be like, nope, you can't say that. I'm like, and here's what I say to Mike is like, look. As a white person, the reason the, the reason white people hate being called racist so much is because I can tell you it's the only word that works. Yeah, well, it's the only word that works. But like, look, you can prove to me ten times over again why I am racist, but I can't prove to you how I'm not racist. Yeah, because the, it, it's the trump card, if you will, and not the president. I mean, the actual game. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I was going to explain that. It's it's the system, and they're going to talk about how you benefit from a systematic. Exactly. So it's it's like if I say, 
Oh, you know, this, that, and the other. You're like, well, you're racist. I'm like, I, yeah. oh, I got a black friend. And they're like, oh, we, we knew you were going to say that. You know well, what I mean? You count them? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Wait, wait, someone tried to cancel us on, or mainly me, for a comment that I made. Really? Said, yeah, they said that I was being sexist. Um, what did you so, say? I would like to so, hear. Yeah, yeah. So I was talking about the whole man spreading thing. And, you mean uh, literally spreading your legs, that one? Yeah, yeah. Oh. So there was, there was a dude that was spreading it. You know, he was on his train spreading the legs, and this this chick and thought it was like she was tired of man spreading, so she started going around and throwing bleach on people's pants. Say what? And, yeah, she was throwing bleach and saying that that's like art. She's like, I'm making men not do this. Uh. I said, I said, hey, I don't care who you are, man, woman, or whatever. I'm gonna beat your legs in backwards if you fucking <laughs> throw bleach. <on." laughs> I've like, never I, heard I, it. I, I want to whoop your ass, you I've, know. I've heard that. And, uh, I've never and heard that one. She, so this girl said that I was inciting violence towards women. I said, "No, I'm just going to beat your ass if you if you pour bleach on me. You have no clue if I if this is my only pair of pants that I have. It's a hard day at work. I'm wanting to sit. You guys talk about your tits getting in the way for shit, getting sweaty. Guess what? Mm-hmm. No one likes to sit with their balls like. So you're right. To, you're going to be spread it's a long day you don't want to fuck with anyone you're just sitting there being comfortable and then you have to go and be a shit dick and put like uh poor bleach on my pants no you're getting uppercut i'm sorry <laughs> Listen, that's dude. how it is I'm not being sexist i've like, always you know? agreed with this I, I told i've told now i've never done it to my wife but i told my wife and i tell all women i said listen anybody and everybody can do something to get hit yeah, it's like it doesn't matter what you are. And I was like, because I showed my wife a video one time, and it's an old video. I don't know if you guys have seen it. I, th- I may have shown it's you, but the the the, the extra tall guy, he could barely speak English, but it's like these old extra hood chicks. You motherfucker, blah blah. And he was like, whatever. And he was trying to get back at him, and now he didn't touch him, and he was walking away. He said yeah. something. He said, "Oh, something, 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 whatever, bitch." Right now, he turns around to walk away, and she had her shoes in her hand. Yep. And she hit, I think I might have showed you, she hit him yep. with her shoes, and she was like, and she was about to start talking, see, you don't know me. And before she could say another motherfucker word, that boy brought that shit all the way from goddamn Mississippi yeah. to smack <laughs> downtown. His, listen, he hit her so hard, she flew back and lost her shoes. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody was like, girl. Oh. And, and all I could say was, she deserved every fucking Absolutely. bit of that. Just like that girl on the uh, on the bus who got uppercut a long time ago. Yeah. When he was like, "Oh, you," go, he said, "You going to jail now?" And then he hit her with the uppercut. That goddamn super street fighter uppercut. Hit her with a planet, dude. Oh man, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you that girl had a strong jaw because yeah. most men would have been knocked out by that. And she stood up. I was like, I was like, look, I respect the hit, but I also respect the fact that that's a strong jaw, bitch, right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's another thing that we had said, like, they were trying to do in our town what they call a fairness ordinance. And they were saying, like, you know, every what every place should be able to serve, you know, black, white, gay, LGBT, all that kind of stuff. Right. Uh-huh. And I said that especially <laughs> when it comes to like, like gays and lesbians, all that kind of stuff. My sister's gay. I love her, you know, uh-huh. and I love the gay community. But I also recognize that people have their own beliefs. And when you want to try and legislate against someone's morals, it never works out well. But I also also I also say that I'm where I am because the world's not fair. Yes. When we put people in a position where it's like, okay, these guys who don't like black people, who don't like gays, who don't like whatever, they have to then start doing stuff. I say we attack them on their wallets. Nothing, nothing really works. change more than, than money. So it's like, make a business. Like I've always said, like, if you want to have a, if, if you're racist, put up a sign saying that you're racist next to your business. See how many people yes. go and do business with you. And then you'll see how much you'll change. But I also say that they need to create better opportunities for the gay community, for the black community, to be able to get lots of start businesses and do all mm-hmm. these other types of things and stay competitive. Like, let those dudes have their businesses and whatever things that they want. But, dude, if we're going to, like, we should have, if we want it bad enough, make a better sandwich shop or a better cake shop. Like, those people suing those people over fucking cakes. Like, do you remember they were like, they didn't want to make a cake? Yeah. Why why would you take it? I do not want a cake from a person who hates me. Hold on. (laughs) Where are you racist and proud? At least I can see it. Exactly. I, I, I I I got it. I got it. I got to hit on something here. 
Go ahead. Because this is what you you were you were actually finishing with when <clears throat> I wanted to go backwards. So I you know apologize for that. But the 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 Christianity thing, right? Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. I was raised in a Christian household. I went mm -hmm. to a private Christian school until yeah, I moved. <laughs> no, so there you go. Yeah. Uh, you know, until I moved in in, in with my mom, um, and, then, and then you know I, 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 I had to figure a lot of stuff out. But uh -huh. the point is, sure. is there are multiple. I, I, I actually looked it up. It's over like five hundred something denominations of quote unquote Christianity. Okay, mm -hmm. and it, it, think about politics. Okay. That's how many political parties there are just on Christianity because people can't agree on stuff, you know, yep. and the reality of it is, is people can't, the interpretation of their Bible is so interpretable and people want to take it so black and white, but there's so many things in my opinion in the Bible that go, get so misinterpreted, okay, and the idea is if you believe in God and you believe in salvation, therefore you believe in Jesus, correct? Mm -hmm. So, Jesus hung out with whores. Yeah, he did. Jesus hung out with fishermen who were losers. They were bums. They, they, that's not, that's, they weren't like a, a sought-out position to be a fisherman. Like, so, okay, retrospect that to today, you know what I mean? It's, it, and this is the most hilarity thing is like why was America started? Essentially, for religious freedom from per persecution. The pilgrims came over. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And you could say all this other say, uh, taxation without representation, but that was actually later. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that was the idea of of migrating to a land of freedom from uh, Catholics and Protestants, right? So, okay, you left that for separation of church and state. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how can I sit here and say, oh, I don't want abortion because I don't agree with it? I understand. I, I can't say I really uh, agree with it 100%, but at the same time, at the end of the day, it's like separation of church and state. Yeah, I, I, The state shouldn't be able to tell the church what they can do, so the church shouldn't tell the state they can't do it because they don't agree with it because of religious beliefs. So yeah, it's like, and if you also want to take it into like an like a almost like an economic way, like the adoption system is fucking garbage. Like, yes, part it is. of the other reason why I'm super for abortion is because it should never cost thirty thousand dollars to adopt a kid but that, if someone doesn't want a kid then let someone else who have it i also support the hell out of gay couples adopting kids at least they fucking want they can't even have a kid exactly. at, least they, at least they want it like no there's not there's not going to be any doubts about them wanting it that is and, insane to me that it costs 30 grand first of all I've yeah, no yes that. it yeah, is true dollars yeah it's stupid expensive to so just, until they can get that price down Kill them all, bro. Throw them in blender. Oh, shit. Like, kill them all, dude. Like, I just, I'm just like, like, this is <laughs> the world we're being born into, bro. This world, like, 30 grand to adopt someone. And then, and then the people that, that are so against the abortion, like, they're they, not willing to adopt. They don't, they don't want to adopt your ass. They don't want to, they don't want the tax burden. <laughs> like, you're potentially someone that's going to be taking their jobs or whatever, but they're real quick to adopt some kid from Korea. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, what, because that shit was like five grand or something like that. And the church pitched in, hey, yeah. fuck you and the whole system. Like, until that shit gets revised, just, I don't care what you do, dude. Damn, just get rid of it. Right? My, the massive, she runs a massive uh, abortion access uh, nonprofit. It's one of the biggest. I mean, she's... <laughs> Spoken in Murray Claire magazine. She goes to mm -hmm. DC all the time to speak there for different events. She, her company is extremely funded by very powerful people. But it's like, I just, you know, she obviously it's a thing of like it's a women's bodies and stuff like that. But I'm just like, yeah, this is the whole the whole system is stupid. Mm -hmm. Bring create a world worth bringing a kid into and watch the numbers drastically drop. Watch them drop. Yeah. Well, I always said that when the politicians, it's always funny that uh, politicians, especially the ones who are so, you know, Christian or spiritual, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it, I was like, they're always like, I'm against abortion to the mistress gets pregnant. Well, yeah, I, I'm against abortion listen, to the daughter listen, gets pregnant. Listen, and it's like, you know, <laughs> then it's like, uh, that's, that's let's go to the next thing and get this abortion boss real quick. That's why this whole Amy, Amy, Amy Barrett thing, Amy Conan Barrett, whatever her name oh, is, the, uh, getting yeah. Yeah, the justice, getting voted. Roe v. Wade was voted with the Republican. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Supreme Court. You know what I mean? It's like they were like, "You want to let this slide? 
Well, yeah. I don't want it to happen to me, so I might need this one time. You know what I mean? They're like, <laughs> exactly. yeah, we'll let it go. We'll let it go. Nobody's looking to turn it over. Nobody. Yeah. You know but what I mean? That's like the same thing with the gun laws, dude. Like, everybody's like, I was like that's uh, always, no, nah, I can see. Uh, like, okay, put it this way. What, what, I forgot Biden said something dumb. I don't, I don't know. They, all, all Democrat, <laughs> huh? Uh, shocker. I know. All Democrats say uh, gun laws, gun, blah, 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 whatever. And then guess what happens? Usually much of nothing. It's like that, like when Obama was in office, uh, they bought guns crazy. I forgot the percentage. It happens every thing. election year. I know what I'm saying. But, but I just remember, well, Obama, I use Obama because that was like one of the first elections that I was old enough to pay attention yeah. to know what was happening. It was like, and um, it was just so funny to see that all these people are out of guns and gun shop. Like same thing happened with Corona when everybody bought all the guns. It's happening right now. No, that's what I'm saying. But it's just funny because they use that tactic. And everything. Yeah, they use that tactic. And then you see all these gun, you know, manufacturers and everything like, man, this is the best time. Oh, man, this is great. Blah, blah, blah. And it's like. But I, th I thought they were going to take all the guns. Like, yeah, oh, we're, yeah. We're, we're building. I'm like, no, they're not. Like, you know how many, put this way, was it 330-something plus people who live, a uh, million people who live in America. There's mm -hmm. over that many, you know, what, 400 million guns. Yeah, I don't we, know we how got many all guns. the guns. I was like, <laughs> but, I was like, but it's not Republicans who have all the guns. It's a bunch. I know a bunch of Democrats who own guns. I know a bunch of people who are retired military, retired cops, or whatever. I just believe it. A lot of older people. Like, I'm talking about 70s, 80s. They believe in, like, I keep a pistol on me. Or I have a pistol on their house for, now, I might have been for some racism back in the day. But even to this day, they're like, sure, I keep a little 22 on me. A Saturday night yeah. special? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 1,000%. You know, I, it's, you know, during the uh, the whole bump stock thing, one of my close friends made about $40,000 in about a month and a half. Because he went and uh, he bought a shitload of bump stock. <laughs> and when they, and then he was selling them on eBay as quickly as he was listening them you know and uh he would just go buy them up and resell them and mark the hell out of it you know what i'm saying mark it up like crazy people like, be pissed off and buy it oh, oh yeah <laughs> they're not, not pissed off scared you know like that's what it all comes down to because i can't remember what shooting was it the las vegas shooting where it was the bump stock thing i thought it was before that uh no it was uh the guy was he bust out that window and then was sitting there with a bump stock that was uh, the las vegas one i, I don't las know vegas? Yes, he shot like five. It was in that country concert where he just started loading. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was like five I, I don't even yeah, think yeah. he had a bump stock. Honestly, I didn't think he had a bump stock. No, he but... just had plenty of ammo, multiple guns, yeah. and plenty of time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, like you can, if you really want to play on people's emotions, that's the that's the best way. Fear is a is a hell of a drug. But yeah, man, we. <sighs> This is this is a good conversation, man. This is uh, you know this is this is definitely well. That goes back to the point though of like. It what's hilarious though is is you know you, you want to kick a Republican in the teeth or a Trump thumper if you will <laughs> of being like hey you know what Trump's done against the Second Amendment they're like nothing uh uh they don't they don't even know they don't even know Fox News doesn't talk about what Trump did for the Second Amendment they're, they don't have no clue and I'm like uh huh wait what did he do look, I'm I'm a, I'm a little I'm well banned bump stocks was one ah. but like the, the the funny thing is is like look and, and now we're gonna go to the that but it's like trump wanted to run as a democrat and now mm -hmm. he's he yep. just he was like oh i gotta say well, i, love, I love god and i hate abortion Wait, all you, right yep check what, i'm you, in what you like saying? that's the two things you gotta say to be republican no he said you, you besides that it's like you said trump is a a, a democrat and uh like a republican had some shit. what did you say you said it uh, yeah, i mean he he's remember <laughs> I, that's why i'm like he's not really that crazy conservative i mean if you look at a real just if you look at people, democrats versus off. republicans mm -hmm. this is where like my opinion is this far left thing and this is why i would love to talk to your friend uh <laughs> he really wants your friend i'm gonna be honest with you he if you, i don't if want you your friend i just right I, and your friend no 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 no, no 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 <laughs> i just and this is what i was crazy because i was listening to your podcast and you're like well i'm a libertarian and he's like well i'm a socialist i'm like what these two yeah. guys are like <laughs> apart, yeah. you know what i mean and i'm like they're talking like it was it's cool to see you guys talk but again i go back to what i see socialists and it's like this person's 19 and has no life experience i'm like all right you got nothing for me you know what i mean don't don't even so to hear someone who's in their 30s in is at my level and you know it sounded like he knew a lot about politics i'm like ah you know i, I yep. want to talk to this guy because i'm like you know i'm surprised you still feel this way because to your point <clears throat> When, when, and I don't know his situation, I don't know what he lives in, I don't know anything about him, mm -hmm. but it's like, okay, it, usually people later in life get more conservative. And yeah. I, I, I understand 
the emotional told- feeling of everybody is happy and, and all together. But I'm mm-hmm. like, reality comes down to competition wins. Competition yeah. makes us better. Competition yeah. makes us thrive. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm he like, says, uh, in a per- he says, in a perfect world, I would be a libertarian. And I tell him I'm a libertarian because the world's not perfect. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, see, we have a- and, and I, I have a, uh, a brother-in-law who is a libertarian. And oh, really? I'm like, I can't agree with you on a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? Because and look, I was down and I visited my uh, uh, and this is funny because Mike's and I conversation, you know, and what we talk about, I, I wind up stepping up and telling a lot of white people stuff they don't know when they start talking about racism. And I'm like, listen, let's four white guys behind them closed doors. Like this is basically a clan rally, okay? Calm the fuck down. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> there's a lot of stuff you don't know about that they're they're still mad about, okay? Like, give it a break. Um but the point is, like, you know, he was going to some libertarian stuff, and I'm like, ah, look, we can't have the Wild West out here because we know. Yeah, exactly. Like, if these – if if Amazon could own everything, they fucking yeah. would. Microsoft we we got to be like, look, one. Amazon, you've been a little too big. We're going to have to knock you down a peg. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because if not, you know, AT&T, same thing happened to them. They're like, hey, you got to split yeah. it up. Mm-hmm. So look, what, look what happens with cable right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. The only reason that – Cable's having any competitions because of Fios. Dish was a fucking flop. Let's be honest. Oh, yeah, but you got Fios, or and, and, and you know, cable it gets jacked. Well, first of all, cable's not even really a thing. Like, I, well, I'm, not I anymore. Mean, so it's, like, it's like, like me, you, you do Fire Stick, Roku, shit like that. Right, yeah. but now you're, you, you're gonna start seeing this thing surge where you gotta you gotta sign well, up for all, all these, these different things. subscriptions HBO now. Max, yeah. You know, you, you, it went to be like, oh, I just have I have Netflix, fifteen dollars a month, man. It's fucking great. And Amazon and it's like, Prime. Came oh no, with, now yeah. you gotta get now you gotta get Hulu. Now you gotta get yeah. HBO Prime, and now you gotta get uh, you, what, the, the, <laughs> what you just Prime. said. You're gonna have like twelve different subscriptions to watch all your TV shows. You're back to paying cable prices. I have I have seven of them right now. And it's because of kids, because I have at least two of them that are for kids. But it's funny because I told my wife, we used to pay like 270 And it's because she works from home as well. And then we knocked it down to like one, like 130 140 mm-hmm. And I was like, all right, cool. But then we started getting like a couple more subscriptions to see some shows that we wanted to. And then yeah. it was like, then it jumped up to like 175 180 And I was like, whoa, whoa, wait, this is going in the wrong direction. And then we got a yeah. couple more, and now we're back at 200 I was like, I mean, it's still better, but I was like, but... Uh, HBO Max. We wanted to, my wife wanted to watch some of HBO Max, and it was like she signed up for the free trial. And we just canceled it today, and it was like, yeah. damn, because they got the uh, Justice League movie coming out next year. The Snyder, yeah, uh, was it the Snyder? Snyder. Yeah, yeah, the Snyder version. And mm-hmm. I saw the the goddamn trailer for it, and I was like, why the fuck they didn't put this shit out? Like, oh my god, this movie would have been so much better. But yeah. I think somebody died yeah. in his family when he did it. But either way, yeah, like you're saying, like cable is. Cable's not, it's not, it's not going to die. It's, honestly, it's just uh, maneuvering. It's, you know, being malleable, as we said, because the companies are just now like, each individual company is like, you got to buy our things separately. Like, you don't mm-hmm. get anything else with this. Like, Hulu and, um, really, Hulu and maybe Amazon Prime are the only ones that have, like, you can have their channel and maybe look into something else. Right. Yeah. But everybody yeah. else is a singular uh, entity. True, true. With cable too, you got to learn to play the game. Like I, I for the last maybe how long have I been out of college? Since two thousand eight, I've been telling them that I'm a college student. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I have four hundred down and and twenty up, but I pay sixty four dollars a month. I think it's something like that. Said, I'm gonna tell so, them I'm a college student. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. I mean, like, look, they just tell them, you know, because if you do the whole like, well, I'm gonna threaten to leave, they're like, are you though? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we used to do that until it's not we'll working. We'll give you a discount. Yeah, yeah. So I have that, and then of course I have, you know, I get my. You know, everyone has their fire sticks, and you know, I have a I have a media server and stuff, and so yeah, I got um, jailbroken. Yeah, all my sticks. all my t- I say, yeah, all my tech guys that I know like have the best shit. They're like, oh yeah, I've been watching this movie. I'm like, the movie yeah. just came out yesterday. Like, yeah, 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 I watched it last night. Every <laughs> single every single one of my TVs has a jailbroken fire stick hook up to yeah. it, and I am, you just gotta learn a skill. It makes it so much easier. Look, man. Yes, <laughs> and I am on top of that. I got the latest yeah. apps. And don't you turn no motherfucking I have NFL uh, screw. You understand that? <laughs> I have NFL. goddamn idiot. No, I'm scared. <laughs> I, have, I have NFL Sunday ticket. I get to watch all the games. I get everything, yeah. and it's like, yeah, you know what? That's that's because you're not competitive. <laughs> Step your game up. That's how I just well, cable was my free shit. <laughs> yeah, cable wasn't for a long time. It didn't have to be. No, mm-hmm. no, they didn't have to be. Like but- Firestick and, and and Roku were not really. I mean, they have been around for a while, and people are like, yeah, whatever. 
And now people are like, nah, I'm, I'm only fucking with Well, that's because more people like me get the word out. And they're like, what you got? Well, that's you, what I'm saying. How it, you watching this right now? <laughs> about three years ago, we finally got the nerve up to get rid of it. And I was like, oh, there is no different. And I can watch this whenever. Oh, man, fuck that. Like, let's do this. I'm sorry if I cuss too much for people. No, no. no I, I, think it's, I think it's great being able to, if, if you're resourceful, if you have the means and the knowledge. And we're in the age of the internet. Like, yeah. There is, if there's one thing that I wish every American had, it's internet access. Because, like, after seeing kids make millions of dollars doing slime videos and like unboxing, of- are you talking about twenty eight million dollars, Ryan? I know Ryan because my daughter watches him every goddamn day, and I'm me and my wife are incredibly jealous of this fucking family because we watched their old videos, and I was like. All they did was go around the house and use a simple fucking program to put in a graphics. I was like, this little motherfucker made twenty eight million dollars in a year. I'm sorry. We're, yeah, we're, I mean, we're, like, we're trying to try not to pimp our daughter out right now. Yeah, but <laughs> if you learn to do that stuff, like it's okay. Like, go ahead and go ahead and do it. Like, they're they're obviously not stopping anything. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. You do, then you go and find something different. Like, let's the the reality of it is that it costs a lot of money <laughs> to take you to court. Mm-hmm. They'll go to the, the source of all the content. <laughs> not going to go for like a single person. Mm-hmm. So. If you're paying them something like for internet, then do that and reap the benefits of the rest of it. Like, I just don't, you know, and they people do shady shit at the very top. You know what I'm saying? All the time. All the time. So it's like the one thing that my dad taught me is learn to play the game. Learn from your white friends. Learn from your smart friends. Learn from all of those people and don't be above it. Or don't feel like you're below it exactly. to be, you know, to be able to go and learn how to do some shit. Like that's how you win. That you, that, this is all a game. Dude. Just you, learn to play. you know what's funny? I just, uh, I was like, if I was part of the cancel culture, I just saw two things that he did right now that I could attempt to cancel him on. And it's the same shit Biden did where you said uh, white kids and you said smart kids. Just like when Biden said, no, I know know what you meant. I know what you meant. I know exactly what you meant. (laughs) If you think that you can lick my ball. (laughs) (laughs) But the funny shit is I was like, cause I was like, Oh, I say, see, I could right there. I could attempt to cancel. I say, but cause like with Biden, when he was like, black, what do you say? Uh, uh, black kids, like, yeah, yeah. He's like, it's, exactly smart about. kids are uh, no, black kids are just as smart as uh, white kids. White, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. worse than that. It's like, but it had to do. Uh, it doesn't matter. We all know what we're talking about. Way. Yeah, we all heard it. But I just wanted to throw that in there. I was like, ah. right, Jesus. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I liked how you said he, he didn't even. He probably didn't know he said oh, it. Oh, he didn't know this. That's why I was like. The the, rea- like the, the reality of it. No. Oh, the reality of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was the, the the reason we came up with the name. Well, I, he it was did. the thing that I used to say all the time was perception reality, and it's like the reality of it is people's perception is their reality. Exactly. And it's like okay, to, that comes back to the idea of the show. It's like listen, if you perceive as all white people are racist, that's mm-hmm. your reality. If you yeah. perceive as all black people are whatever it is, mm-hmm. I don't even know what to say, but that's your reality. So the yeah. perception has to meet in the middle and become reality. He's you know what I mean? So much. It, it's like you, so you, you've got to have that conversation. And that's <laughs> essentially. But it, look, I'm a white yeah. guy having a conversation with two black dudes right now. For I'm sure. fucking made yeah. in heaven right now because I, it oh, was man. hilarious. Not this sounds stupid, but like Mike <laughs> knows this, dude. I, when I see a black person, like, oh, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like a like a like a puppy dog. I'm like, oh, I gotta go say hi. I gotta go talk to him. I, I gotta be like, hey I'm man, how you doing? Worse. You want to talk? I want to talk to you. He assumes you every talk? black person gonna be like me or like you. right, right. They're just gonna be cool and. They're not always. <laughs> hey, I was like, like sooner or later, he's going to start getting the negative view. It was like, but <laughs> I, I do like about it. His wife even said it. She was like, he's like a fucking Yeah, my puppy. wife hates me, man. He was like, he was like baby, there's a, there's a black person over there. I got I to I go <laughs> say something. Say hi to him. Yeah, yeah it's like, like, oh, hey, how you doing, man? Because his, where we, where you we're You want to talk about racism? It's so lily white. Like, oh, what? man. <laughs> I was like, I, I told him I'm still waiting on the day to get pulled over. I'm I'm waiting for it. I was like, but I said I come in the daytime, you know. I was like, so it's like, and then I'm, I I leave sometimes too well, late. Yeah, it's winter time. <laughs> you're gonna be leaving in the dark. Yeah. But, I will say here in Kentucky, like the cops aren't like you would think that they'd be like some like terribly like super racist people. Does something happen in sure Kentucky? There are, no, but they're do what now? No, Breonna Taylor. 
Well, I'm saying in that's Kentucky, Louis- right? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking with you, but I'm saying I'm, oh, I was trying to think of what happened in Kentucky. I'm like Kentucky. Why am I? I was like, oh, <laughs> Breonna Taylor. Yeah. But yeah, they uh, it's it's there's something weird about at least in my town. You know, I I just never ran into you know any shit with them at all. You know, and and I and I've been in some rural areas and I've been pulled over going like I've been going like Mach six and like. <laughs> I get pulled over, and the guy's like, well, "What are you doing?" You know, what I'm saying, like, <laughs> like, I don't even know how this happens. I mean, there's one part where I got pulled over twice in a week, and I didn't get a ticket for either for either of them. One thing, my I had my bike rack on my car, and it was covering my plate, but oh, okay. my car matched another car that was speeding really fast, and um, and so I was like, "Hey, sorry, that wasn't me," or whatever, and uh, they've been totally fine now. I think that could be because they all got put on notice, uh, and that might be a thing. So, you know, I'd be forced to not recognize that something like that exists, you know. Mm-hmm. But I do think that over time, uh, it's just going to – it'll get a little bit better for a lot of the police officers out there. And just like, you know, and I, and I and just because I got to go here a little bit, I, I don't want to – I figured. You know, I watch it go from daytime to nighttime. <laughs> <laughs> There's certainly the talks of, you know, you know, defunding and I I know you guys all understand that they don't mean defund. It's just reallocate funds, but everyone loves marketing terms. Exactly. You know, like, and that's why I'm glad that we can all agree on the fact that cops need to be paid a lot more to do, and they need to be doing way less than what they're doing right now. And so um, if they can just focus on those little things, I guarantee you we'll have much happier in my opinion, uh, cops right. and they need to be in areas that they don't, that, that they live. <laughs> so, so I got to ask you one more question because Mike and I actually, was this last night we talked about this? Was that was uh, the case that just happened? In yeah. Philly? I got to ask you about the Philly situation. I, I, I live close to Lancaster, Pennsylvania. If you saw that with the, with the black guy chased the, the, the well, cop. it was two, it was two guys, but right? The but, one with the dreads who got shot in front of his mom. Well, actually they both got shot in front of him. God damn. Yeah. <laughs> and like, both times the mom called the cops. Um, no, no, the mom didn't call the cops in one in Philly. It was uh, like a friend of the family. You know, there was three different phone calls, what three different, three different 911 phone calls on that guy that, uh, that day. But, um, with the dreads, right? Yes. Okay. That's the Philly one. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, I was curious to, to since you were talking police, your your take on that. Um, my my lens is very uh, skewed because I'm in a small town, uh-huh. um, and and the cops aren't terrible out here. I agree. You know? um, As so is mine. That's another thing is that I don't think that our minds can scale up to the shit that we're worrying about right now. Um, there's you know, there's people in small communities that are mad about issues in communities that have that are vastly it's it's like another planet compared to what they're mm-hmm. used to, and then they're attributing the attitudes and the uh, you know the thought processes of police officers in those big ass cities to those over here. Like I have cops here, they're like, I don't fucking care if you do drugs, just don't get anyone killed. Like. <laughs> like, like, yes. Other things just go do your own thing somewhere. A lot of these dudes just want to do their shift and go, go home. home. You know? yep. Like they got their own stuff that they're doing. You know, like they just there's just certain things that they you know they a lot of the cops here they drive around they go and shoot ball with kids like they go and do a bunch of cool stuff oh, and yeah. like it's just it's it's very very different here. Like one of our state troopers. Uh, everyone knows him. He's a good friend of he's mine. But Kentucky. like, yeah, yeah, he's a big time bodybuilder. He was on the the Titan Games with the Rock and everything. Oh, like really? That. Uh-huh. And, yeah, his name is Bartley, but he's a uh, he's a good friend of mine. Wait, what's his name? And, uh, Bartley Weaver. Bartley Weaver. You don't know. Bartley. Yeah. Well, I'm a Google him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's on the. So he's not only is he a bodybuilder, a state trooper, but he's a, a nationally or world ranked competitive eater. You know, so he's ranked. <laughs> what? world and so like <laughs> he's just a cool ass dude how do you and, get that bodybuilder well, and competitive eater that's hilarious so in, in in your podcast i kept listening to your your, your boy who was on there who shoot his uh his, his little uh uh 
What? commercial out there <laughs> and you were like hey man you're not paying me for this <laughs> and he's like oh you coming on come on down when you don't shoot guns and you know shoot you out of fight and this that and the other and i was like wait wait okay so like listen i, I just gotta throw this shameless shout outs right exactly it, look i i have lifted weights for a very long time <laughs> used to be a lot bigger than i got married um <laughs> it, it, yeah that goes downhill uh i i, I love guns Mike and I go to the gun range. We actually were just talking about this Philly case, and I'm like, all right, listen, we're going to go to the gun range together next time it's nice out, and we're going to try to shoot a target in the leg. I thought he was trying you to know shoot what me. Mean? I was like, motherfucker, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> right. <laughs> it, right there, man. <laughs> and I used to, I, I trained, I used to, I used to actually cage fight. I, you know, I trained mm -hmm. martial arts for a very long time, mm -hmm. um, and, and I love martial arts, as does Mike. Mm -hmm. Um you know what I mean? So, yeah, I heard your, your guy say all this, and I'm like, so this guy's a socialist, but he likes all this. I'm, I'm so confused right now. That's how people <laughs> talked about That's you. That's why I want to talk to this guy, but you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, to take the well, no, thought I want, there. I wanted to agree with him because. I was like, I got so much in common with this guy, but this one thing. <laughs> <laughs> with, with Steve, like what me and Steve talked about, and I told him, I said, uh, I said, you know what? One of the biggest things that I guess you could say, you could say somebody in the hood or, or whatever. I was like, most of the time when they're seeing cops is when the cops, and they're doing a the job. They're coming and they're knocking heads and then they leave. Yeah, it's all the bad. I was like, the problem is, I was like, uh, when they say reallocate, for, I mean, uh, you know, defund the police, I was like, what you do is you fucking just, you take some of that money and once a month or even a couple times a month, especially in the summertime when, you know, the kids are out, have a barbecue, have a black party, have something, yeah. get your best officers who are really good with talking with people, get your people out there, yeah. get into the community. And so yeah. instead of me going, there's, oh, there's fucking cops, I go, oh, shit, oh, no, that's Officer Johnson. Officer yeah. Johnson, you know, and I'm willing to talk to him. I was yeah. like, because when you don't, because you get the people who are not from there, who never integrate into the community. Yeah, and then I told him this also works on the other side where you'll get a white person who may not be racist, mm -hmm. grew up in bumfuck Idaho with nothing but white people. Then they go yeah. into the worst neighborhood, like you say, Baltimore, and all they see is negative shit about yeah. this one race of people. Yeah. So now they slowly, slowly get this idea and it, it starts to become uh, solidified with horrible acts. And I'm like, yeah, he's going to become racist. He needs to sit at a desk for about a month or so. And then maybe switch up the areas or whatever. Cause it's like, what's happening is now you're creating racist people or bigoted people or prejudiced people because I was like, yeah, I'm going to think the same thing. If I see negative of one group of people all day long, it's like it bad. puts my life in danger. I feel bad about it. I see kids not being taken care of. I see all this horrible shit in this one area. Fuck all these people. I don't care. You know, that type of stuff. But then again, like I said, on the other side with the cops, like you have to integrate into the community. You have to show your face. It's just like, uh, like being a, a father or something. I can't yeah. just, I could be the perfect financial father to my kids if I want to just make sure my child support is on time. I can make, matter of fact, I put extra on it, yeah. but I never come and see them. Yeah. They are going to hate me, dislike me. They don't yep. care that the money's being there. Uh, yep. they, yeah. Their lives are not hard. They're going to remember that I wasn't the there. It's only to, in, in my opinion, it's uh -huh. only to stop the mom from talking shit about you. <laughs> exactly. I was like, she can't talk all the shit in the world. Yeah. I was like, child support. I was like, but again, but if I do the child support and I come by and I'm picking them up and they see me on the weekends and we yeah. do stuff and I'm there as much as whether me and the mom work out or not, it's like they're going to love me. They're going to cherish me, which they should because I'm their father and I should put that in them. I was like, so that's the same thing. It's like right now it's like a, a, a child support situation where, yeah, you're coming in and doing your job like we asked you hope most of the time. It's like where, hey, we got a crime going on. We got somebody bad happening. Boom, come get them, right? Sometimes yeah. it goes a little wry, looks bad, whatever, whatever the optics are. But that's essentially what they're doing. But mm -hmm. then when, the, like I said, with the with the guy, was it Chauvin? Chauvin? I don't Derek know Chauvin. Yeah. I guarantee you, people knew him in the, in, the, in that community as fucking asshole. I, yeah. I would I would agree. I was like, that's what yes. I'm saying. So yes. it's like, get get in those communities, man. It's like, because I, I agree with they should be from the area, but I know it's hard to do that. I was like, because the just, job pays so little. You know, they, they have to have like seen some shit. I got one of my buddies who was um uh who's a he was a great officer mm -hmm. and uh but he he's been to Afghanistan. Like he's like, oh, yo, I real shit. Scare me. I don't you people don't fucking scare me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> people will get in his face and he's just like, Yeah, what are you gonna do about it? You know what I'm saying? Right. He's he, he and then on top of that, he just he gets it like 
he he's always real chill with people who are you know out of line or they might be too fucked up like they would actually get on him for not going hard enough on people you know what i mean yeah and it's like it's no, crazy it seems to be worse you know what i mean and uh he's like he just kind of knows that it could be much worse than that and he grew up in new jersey like in a poor part of new jersey mm. and he somehow found his way down here and so I think that, you know, I don't think that if I think if you've never played sports, you should never be a cop. Like, because you don't know, because I think sports gets your ego checked real hard. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and, like people Actually, I say were, martial arts, honestly. Yeah, yeah I, that's the next thing. I was going to say martial arts. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, like, if you haven't been to war, like, I think that it should be all these things. Because some of these, like, there's some cops out here that were... Um, you know, they, they get that badge. And it's because, you know, they got shit on in high school. Yeah, you know, they got power now. They get, yeah, they get a little bit of power and then they kind of all that shit get, get unchecked, plus their ego. And they feel like they're just the God. You know, there I have one friend who was. Um, oh, shit. <laughs> he was a, he was an officer. He is an officer. He's like a detective now. But like, um, you know, he was real quiet and then he got the badge and all of a sudden he was like, I can't do that. I'm an officer of the law. And I was like, shut your bitch ass up. <laughs> <laughs> I still tell him that all the time, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I'm like, you still fucking lame, dude? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's nothing. You know, it's, I'm just like, we, we have got to have some people that have seen some shit. And I think that that is going to make better police officers on top of paying them more. I so, agree. Anyway. I, I did martial arts for a very long time, and again, people used to. I always got the phone call when someone is in a fight, or they they <laughs> yeah. wanted to go get in a fight. Like Steve, this guy said some shit. I want to go whoop his ass. And I'm like, dude, what? And yeah. I, you know, I would just stand behind him while they sit there and jabber jabber. But yeah. martial arts actually caused me not to get into fights yeah. because I respected fighting, mm-hmm. and I also knew I had no feeling of ego that I had to prove because I just knew I'd whoop the shit out you. You know what I mean? Like, look, I can kick your ass. Like, I'm right, sorry. Right. Like, I'll kick your head and you're gonna die. I'm gonna go to jail for the rest of my also, life. It's not gonna happen. You, you know respect what I mean? people more because you're like, I can get punched in the face. I've been punched in the face. It doesn't oh, I've feel been punched good. in the face it's many like, times. And it's like, if somebody punches me in the face, like, th- you don't talk crazy to people because you're like, mm, yeah. I don't know what this guy knows. He might punch me in the face and I might not wake up. But it's, it's <laughs> you get you gain a general respect because yeah, of, of everybody he's like ah he might you know this that, and the other but it, plus that you understand the damage you can do to somebody and, and how long term yeah. that could be whether they get brain yeah. damage or you <laughs> kill them yeah. you know what i mean like Man, listen I, I hit you I hit in the throat and it claps that thing is it's yeah. game over you can't breathe no more and i'm going to jail for the rest of my life and i'm sitting there like i didn't mean to do it you know what yep. i mean like no i'm not gonna do that i'm not even gonna participate i'm Bigger than you and a lot stronger than you. I'm gonna mess yeah. your day up. Yep. Yeah, my buddy who did who fought also like he he just would tell us like the one thing that when you get training and you have that ability to like you know, really hurt someone, he just he's like, I just ask people who step up like, hey, do you feel safe right now? Just ask them that, you know. Uh, that is the that's like that Bane shit where he put the yeah. hand on that guy. He was like. Do you feel in charge? <laughs> Do you feel in charge? Yeah. <laughs> I thought yeah. that was the coldest line in the world. Uh, I was. Was like, Ask someone if they feel safe, you know what I'm saying? And that's usually the time where they're just like, okay, this this dude's not to be fucked with. <laughs> I got know? a story, but I, I'm leaving next yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I really do appreciate you guys taking time to uh, shit yeah. us. We appreciate you. We no, do this, this, we do this, this all the time. Yeah, we do this all the time. This was an awesome conversation. And all honestly, uh, you know, we'd like to do this more with you. We'd like to talk to you. Sure. You know, your other friends and your other people you do podcasts yeah. with. If you if you um, scrape the bottom down here with us a little bit longer, um, what well, I, I do got to ask you. I heard you say you had twenty. Was it twenty thousand downloads? Yeah, 20, downloads. Yeah. Was that and you do nothing but audio, right? Yeah, it's just audio. Oh, really? And do you put that on like a podcaster tree or just Apple iTunes? Yeah, I I have it on. Um, it's so we we use Podbean. Um, Podbean. And that, yeah, that goes to iTunes. It goes to Spotify and it goes to Google. Um, and so no one uses Google really, but we have got people using Spotify. <laughs> but the majority are using Apple iTunes app. And then it'll show you like where they are all over the world. You know, it's, it's cool. There's people in Australia, people in like Europe, all sorts of spots, and they're somehow listening to stuff. But uh, yeah, it's been cool. So we had my my ex's cousin, who's still a really good friend of mine. He's a really big time YouTube star in in Colombia, like Colombia, Colombia, not Colombia, South Carolina. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say, wow, okay. 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, is that like a million followers and all this kind of stuff has sure. a big YouTube channel. And so we did an episode with him and that started getting followers from over there, you know? Yeah. And uh, so it, it's just doing that kind of stuff. It's just connecting with people. But again, like the, that part is fine, but it's, it's not, it's not what drives us, dude. It's, it's just the content, you know? And if, and if I say, or Chris says, or if Mark says one thing that, literally talk someone off the ledge or gets them to open up their mind and like this is a success my work is done you know so 100 that's, that's, that's where we come from with it no i i get that it's just mike and i've been doing this for a while and, it, and for <laughs> well, well well for a while there it was like once every two months so i mean mm -hmm. yeah. out of all of our episodes a lot of our episodes should be us talking on the phone because we'll <laughs> yeah. talk you, you what you called me the other night at what two in the morning now we were going back and forth about the case and uh he talked till four in the morning yeah i was saying he's he said something i don't like and i was like god damn it, i can't get my point across sex can i call you yeah. <laughs> and it yeah. was like and then we just talked and that's like bored yeah Oh, you know what? We he's got a point. <laughs> because all your episode needs to be it doesn't need to be your video. It can just be your logo with like the sound thing with Jake mm -hmm. that's like going over. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that that is one thing we do. Like we'll upload some episodes to to YouTube, mm -hmm. but like I mean, I, if I remember, I'll upload it to YouTube. But other than that, it goes to the other. It goes to the other spots. And that's that's the problem is uh, like I focus so much on the video as that being the standard of like how you how you quote unquote podcast. Because yeah. again, I was lost in the sauce of Joe Rogan. Yeah, I was saying, oh, yeah, that following, was the only thing I had to go off of. Hundred million dollar man. And then, then I, I had a buddy who called me out. He's like, "Okay, how, do, do you how often do you watch Joe Rogan?" I was like, "Well, we'll, we'll, we'll never." He's like, it, it, "Exactly." Yeah, so leave it on. Why, and, uh, do shit. Yeah. I, I, and I don't. I never watch his YouTube stuff. It's always on, you know, yeah. Apple Podcasts. So oh, it's really? like, yeah, I never watch his YouTube stuff. It's always on. YouTube. It's always on uh, Apple yeah, Park. Like that was it. How many hundred million dollars for Spotify? Oh, oh, yeah. or stupid, shit? stupid. Yeah, yeah, so he's got that whole thing set up. The YouTube thing is merely for advertisements, dude. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, that's what it's for. You know, he makes YouTube uh, revenue, and they don't even have to finish the episode. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, you know, I listen to his stuff. I listen to. I don't listen to it all the time, but I like to listen to Jordan Peterson a good amount. I love Jordan Peterson. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I like to listen to his content, um, and it's just it's just really it's good stuff, man. It's it's some shit that men need to hear. And it's really cool when there's a woman that's like, "Hey, I listen to Jordan Peterson," and, she, and I have one friend especially, and she says that she likes to listen to him. She's like, "I just don't want to get canceled with my girls," and I was like, "I get it." She does. <laughs> so make you squirm a little bit. Uh, yeah, so. I've gotten in arguments with feminists before. So yeah. I, I get that. Oh, you know, I'm like, uh, that's hilarious. Before I go, that that was this is one joke. This one girl told me. She said, uh, "How how many feminists does it take uh, to like screw in a light bulb?" And I can't remember. But the punchline was that it was like none because they can't get anything done. Yes, <laughs> so, I, 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 I damn. <laughs> I just really heard the exact joke that you're talking about, and I, I, I don't. I feel like I heard it on a podcast or something, but like I, I've heard, I heard the joke, and I was like, "Oh, that was good!" Like, "Oh, like that was that's I that was." Want, I, I know to, exactly what you're talking about. And I, 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 I tell I was, the listeners, I'm a feminist. Go, yeah, I'm, I'm just kidding. I, I, I percent support the movement, but I still think everyone can get joked on. Let's be. Oh right. no, yeah, that's exactly. That's, yeah, I, I support everything about their movement. Uh, just like every other movement, there's bad apples out of there, and to those bad apples, I don't like you. You know, Agreed. but uh, everyone else, um, yeah, for the most part, it's kind of like black people. Like, you know, they're 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 some of the good ones out there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I like your accent. I like your accent when hey, you man, do the voice. Stop okay? it. You, sound, you stop. That's you what sound like me. He sounds like me. Stop it. Good ones, Kalu. That's what they say. Kalu. Like, <laughs> Listen, I have to say that about Mike to get people on here that are white. I'm like, look, he's one of the good ones, guys. Come on, he's good. He doesn't say what I meant, but he, uh, I'm pretty sure he said it. <laughs> he's not bad. Yeah, <laughs> they are. They are very much afraid of talking to me. I'm like, first of all, you I have don't know no idea. You, you have no I don't, idea. I can't get you fired, guys. I was like, and then this is your friend's podcast. He's going to yeah. edit this, not me. <laughs> I, I brought. I, I invited him to the Christmas party last year. I have a Christmas party every year, and we were the only black people there. And, and me and my wife. Yeah, and I was like, hey guys, the black guys come and get all the racist jokes out right now. <laughs> While he's on the phone, like, hey, where do you live? I'm right down the street. I'm like, guys, stop telling the jokes. <laughs> it was a good time, man. Hey, man, listen, I appreciate you. I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, it was a great. 
perspective to get from you. Um, You're a wild boy, by the way. You said some shit that I'm like, oh, I can't wait for this to go up. He's going to get oh, some yeah. cringes. Oh, man. Um, I was like, I got some super socialist liberal friends on uh, on the Facebooks and the Instagrams. Oh, I can't I wait to see. I, you know, send them my information. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I don't care to be burned at the stake. You felt something, so whatever. You and know? you know what? I love that you have that same attitude because it kind of gives me when when I heard your podcast and and you guys said that what you said of, about you know. Listen to it. If, if you get offended, go fuck yourself. I was like, ah, it made me feel good because that's a lot of what ours is. And, and like, listen, I've had multiple things that I record. I'm like, are you sure I'm okay with this? Because yeah. I'm I'm a white dude. He I'm calls, afraid of cancel culture. Let's be honest. I'm afraid like, of cancel culture. I was like, man, don't fucking worry about it. You'll be all right. You yeah. know, and, and it's 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 a nerve wracking thing to, to talk about this. Afraid to listen, and you're not afraid to be wrong, and you're not afraid to learn and, and be corrected if you need be. Then say it out there. Oh, I've been wrong, wrong a lot. <laughs> yeah, the connection that you have with your listeners, like, and and it's really going to come down to their approach. If they come at you just attacking and stuff like that, nothing gets done that way. You know what I mean? Yes. So it's all about that approach. And if people do find something that I said to to hurt their feelings or whatever, don't come at me sideways because I'll just troll you. So like, <laughs> if you want to, like have a normal conversation, let's do it. I'm, it's not it's not a problem. I don't care to be wrong or to be corrected or something. So just correct me. I love it. I love it. And it's Kylo? Kylo. Kylo? Kylo? Yeah, you just say Kalu, man. Let's just keep no, it. No, no, I'm no, not no, doing no. Kalu, man. I, I, I'm, I let him say yeah. Kalu. I let him say oh, Kalu. fuck you. <laughs> Kylo. I fucking love this one, man. Yeah, this, this. Listen, this was awesome. I really appreciate it. Let's do yeah. this again sometime. Absolutely. And I still want to talk to your socialist friend. Don't forget Absolutely. that. I want to talk to you all, but, man, I appreciate you, brother. Yeah. You guys be safe, okay? Hey, right, man, you too. too. All right, see ya. See ya.